2024 will go down as the most important year in our lifetime for one reason and one reason only. It's the 20th anniversary of the Nectar of the Gods known to us mere mortals as Mountain Dew Baja Blast. That's right. For the first time in recorded human history, this sweet manna from heaven is available in stores everywhere all year long. And to celebrate this once in a generation occasion, the boys have been tapped like a soda fountain to collaborate on an extremely limited coastal leisure set of throwing fits classics. Code name Blasting Fits. First up, we got logo lock up pod shorts done up in a tasty strappe stripe that are perfect for linking and building poolside over a frosty glass of ice cold Baja Blast. Garcon, two straws. Next up, we're dropping an easy breezy French Terry quarter zip and sweatpants combo as seen on the boys for when you're trying a big dog on the boardwalk. Here's the thing. There's only one way you can be blasting fits all summer long, from the beach to the barbecue <laughs> and beyond. Head over to BajaBlast.com to learn more. Happy baja anniversary to all who celebrate and everyone blasting fits this season. Out here in the fields, <laughs> she finds us these deals. It's oh a God. media <laughs> wasteland. Word to Mama Riley. Throw gang, we are joined by the shopping shaman. Her eminence of the email must be a dominatrix how she got these sub stack. She puts the gas in mag magazine. Every issue, a headshot got her. John's in the booth and she be Lincoln. Call her Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade how she's hunting these grails. No pork on her fork because she don't do spam. The newsletter body count crazy because it's always in box. All these sales call her Captain Needma. <laughs> Her click is valid because the links are affiliated. Writer oh and founder God. of the magazine newsletter, Laura Riley. Laura, how the hell are you? Oh my God. I was so <laughs> looking forward to that. That was beyond. I love fucking I love I love music. I feel like you're yeah, yeah. I feel like you're like actually like a podcaster, but a rapper. Ooh, podcast I like rapper. that. I was gonna say your voice is just so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, thank Pleasure. you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, our pleasure. Wow. Uh, I feel well, like a great time. we had to send a lot of emails to make this happen. Did oh, we? yeah? No. I'm very unavailable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make you, you look good and busy. You can't get me. <laughs> Mostly just because I won't respond to emails because my inbox is a mess. But really? Like, it's terrible. What You're, is the unread amount of emails? No, I mean, it's like it's like 200 right now. That's not bad. But that's like daily maintenance. Like, I'm I'm trying to get Try it. You don't want to know what this guy's like. Flex on it's you real quick. Is it like in the 50K? 52,830 kind of yeah, unread emails. I am unavailable. That is not something to be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. And I have a problem. All like, those are all like, I need to get through to these. I no, need to get back to every no. single one of these. No, it's 52 all. Uh, 52,000 people are waiting to hear from no, you. No, GQ is just getting cheaper by the month and they won't stop. I'm not getting a subscription. I'm good, boys. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, Laura, thank you again so much for joining us. Yeah. The first thing we want to do is a fit check where you're going to walk us and the audience at home through everything you are wearing today. Oh, okay. Do you want to start top down or bottom up? Um, let's do, I guess, top down. Okay. Because that's how I think. That's how I think about it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, like I think the more the more important things are like the shoes, really. But it's like maybe that's like the big reveal at the end. Oh, you know? I like that. It's like keep them waiting. But that's yeah. how you get dressed top down usually. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think about an outfit. Like, the way you, when you look at a person, you, like, look at them, you look at their eyes first, and then you kind of, like, see. Sure, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah, yeah, okay. Dude. Yeah. You look into their soul through right, their right, right, eyes. Right. Hey, my eyes are up here. Yeah. <laughs> and then you kind of, like, trickle down from there. Okay. You kind of do the little trickle judgy. Trickle down yeah. You, yeah, you do the judgy, like, look up and down. Well, for starting up top, are we going up. outside in or inside so outside, out? Outside, I think outside in. Right. Let's do it. So I was wearing, what was it? I was wearing a coat when I got here. You were wearing a coat, a right. trench. Uh, yeah, it's like a little, it's Rue Sophie is the brand. It's mm -hmm. like a new, they're very affordable actually. Mm -hmm. Like um, just kind of, you know, minimally, you know, the row knockoffs kind of vibe. Nice. Um, is it expensive? No, it's like, it's this, the coat itself is like 300 bucks or oh, something. Nice. It's like really, maybe not even. Chic like, and sheep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. A mosquito could never. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But it's a good one. It's 100% cotton. Um, and then. Nice little spring number. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then this is this like white button down cotton shirt, also, I guess, is Lisette. Um, a lot of French ass brands. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess so. I mean, but, maga they, magazine. Right. Magazine. Right. Magazine. You know? yeah. I think that's like my kin, right? It's like the French kind yeah. of wannabe. Americans like putting myself. on airs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my people. Yeah. 
Um, and then the tank that I'm wearing is Reformation. Oh no, Realization Par. What is that? They're also kind of French, actually. <laughs> okay. I'm sensing a theme I know. here. Yeah. I'm like, wait, and then the pants are, are Escada. But is are these brands French? actually French or are they like American brands that just are using French words in their oh, names? Oh, well, I, Rue Sophie, I think is, I have no idea. I think American. <laughs> okay. Lisette is giving American. Mm. Realization is Australian. So they're but they're also doing a putting on French airs. They're just starting to realize shit down under. So exactly, very sick cunt move. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I say that Australianly. Yeah. (laughs) Whatever you criminals are up to. Are you Australian? Sick. No. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I think you would be able to tell. <laughs> if I was, you better watch your jewelry. Yeah. Wow. Uh, criminals. Man. Yeah. Criminals. You know. It's right, an island right. of criminals. Uh, yeah. The pantalones. The pants are Escada, which I think is really actually French, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So they're All at right. least valid. That. Um, <laughs> the socks are Comsi. This is getting really embarrassing, actually. <laughs> American. Shout out Jenny. Jenny. Right? Yeah. yeah. Shout out Jenny. That's definitely not the first time that. Come see has been shouted out. These are like the sock yeah. du jour for the for the it girlies They're, right now. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. Okay. So I'm actually working Sorry for on just like looking a, at your yeah, feet, please. but I had to see what <laughs> what's gander. on these dogs. Are. Okay. Have all right. a gander. They look very um, breathable. They're these are like a very fancy like Egyptian silk cotton Ooh, style. Wow. I'm working on like a um, intimates overhaul piece for the newsletter right now. So mm. I called in like six pairs of Come See socks, which I was like, I actually I bought half of them and I called in half because so, I was like, let's support, but. I guess it's getting a little ahead of ourselves, but the newsletter is so product focused. Is that, do you call them in? Do you buy them? Do you it's, get free stuff? Like, I definitely get free stuff okay. for sure. I mean, I'm sure you guys also get like a lot of free stuff. Too much, Too much free, free stuff. For stuff. Sure, for and sure. most of it is dog shit. Yeah, for sure. That do- I mean, like I've been putting up a lot of like, I mean, I wish I could say that I was respectfully rejecting people via my <laughs> inbox, but I usually just don't get back to them. Okay. Yeah. I which think is, that's I feel like bad a, about it. That's sometimes. Go- that's ghosting. <laughs> well, yeah, right. I do. I do Substack ghost ghosting. <laughs> Flow team ghosting. It's true. Sometimes it's true. when I graciously decline, people have a crazy then negative reaction, but I'm like, I tried to be nice about totally. it. Totally. But they're, they get so offended. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it's like- She you, ghosted the flow. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's like <laughs> you would rather like, you know, someone is going to appreciate this piece. Like, it's just going to like- Come to my apartment. I'm going to try it on. Know that I didn't like it. And I'm not going to like it when it's on me. And then I'm going to put it in the pile to sell, (laughs) frankly, (laughs) which feels really bad. Where are you selling? uh, Okay. So I sell. I mean, like it's, I usually sell to the real, real. Um, just because they'll come to your house right. and pick up your shit and you don't really need to ever think about it again. White gloves. And then slap Amazing. it on a mannequin. Yeah. yeah. Incorrectly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. And then merchandise it completely wrong. And you, the and socks are on the mannequin's <laughs> hands. <laughs> and then you end up on the weird reel and you're like, yeah. I actually made it. Yeah, true. That is, I feel like a big stamp of approval. That yeah. is, Great IG I, follow. I hope to be on there one day. I aspire to send in weird enough stuff. That yeah, it makes that it makes it. Okay. What are the, the shoes? <laughs> the shoes, um, which are outside right now. Thank, Thank you. you. You're very welcome. Are um, they're MNZ Olympias, which is like a they're a little Greek. wedge. <laughs> the Greek, yeah, it's a Greek wedge salad. She's like, yeah, they're a, they're away for they're away for summer for sure. Yeah, um, but those are like a those are like an iconic downtown girly pair oh. kind of thing, and I always wear them. And nice. I'm wearing them with the socks just because it's the season. Yeah, it's a little crispy the out. It's a little crispy out. Yeah, um, jewelry. Um, the the earrings are Erede, I think you say. Erede. Okay. E-R-E-D-E. We're going to default to you. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, the ring that I'm wearing is Casa Shop. They do like vintage like homewares, but then also have like a fine jewelry branch okay. site. It is quite thick. It is. It's, a thick, it's like a chunky brand. I actually don't know where they're based, okay. but Casa Shop is... I love to, you know, pretend like I'm not in America. <laughs> right. They're based on the World Wide Web, like yeah. everyone right, right. else. Exactly. Dot um, FR. <laughs> yeah, I know. Shea <laughs> shop. Um, and then the bracelet is Dorsey. I like that. Yeah. Like Kinda the American like Psycho little, restaurant? Is it? <laughs> That's oh, Dorsey, yeah. yeah. I was I like, why is that name so familiar? Yeah. I remember after I saw it and I like moved to New York or something. I, you know, those happened. You moved to New York because years. you were inspired by American it Psycho? Was, What's it wrong was with you? It was just, I wanted okay. to meet a guy. <laughs> it seems like a good place to murder people and get away with yeah. it as a yuppie. But I definitely remember like looking up, like, is Dorsey a real place? Like, can <laughs> I go? Right? Is it? Yeah. In the 80s? It was. I mean, I feel like all the references in the book are to real brands and establishments. Oh. Is the cost real? (laughs) Oh, my God. Actually, um, this is so tangential, but I feel like, you know, we're allowed to go on tangents here. But I went on a date with a guy who was an actor, and he was, um, he was like, he was on, what was that show? High Maintenance once. And he was- Is he famous? No, no. He's like not famous now, but he was like- 
or ever. I don't think he was like just like on this one show. Is the only he's thing about I ever to saw blow him. up. If you're listening, yeah. don't worry, but he, guys. But he was coming. like he was definitely like a weird dude, and um, I like we like went over to like watch a movie. He's like, I have some, um, what do you call them? Screeners. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he had like American psycho on his table. And I was like, what's are you reading it? He's like, yeah, I'm in the play. I'm like really trying to immerse myself. In oh, it. Oh, and then, like, oh, you're like, I know, uh, it was really crazy. It was like, I'm not trying to screener and chill anymore, yeah. bro. Yeah. It was true. Like Huey Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> It's put on a fucking trench. Yeah, the Muji trench. Ooh. Oh my god. Yeah, it was definitely like the only time I've ever been like split from a date. Like, I feel ill. Must yeah. leave. Congrats on not getting murdered. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very proud of that. We would have never been able to podcast that. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Congrats to you on having Thank this you. podcast because mm -hmm. I wasn't murdered. Well, that's the last we're going to talk about. Uh, guys, you went on dates with in the past. Um, yeah. But, but uh, wait, we're not doing the fit check. <laughs> uh, Brawn nice. panties. Oh. Um. Speaking of intimates. Yeah. Issa, which is a, oh shit, it's a French brand. That's <laughs> Bro, so, this is so embarrassing. You're such a Francophile. How, wow. What percentage a of your, stereotype. What, percentage of, so bad. what percentage of your wardrobe is either French or French uh, stolen valor? I couldn't tell you actually. I mean, who, oh, well, the bag is Bottega. So oh. that's Italian. Oh, True. we got to shout out the fucking bag. Yeah. The I Bottega. mean, come on. Is it new or vintage? Uh, vintage. Oh. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's the hobo style in mm. Trecciato. It's beautiful. Thank Very you. Nice. Nice. But yeah, you know, needed to like go pan European for right, this. Right. The Absolutely. continent. Wait, so brawn panties are both the. Uh, yeah, they're actually, yeah. Very, right. you know, very fancy of me. All right. But uh, I'm doing, I'm doing like an intimates overhaul thing. So I'm like testing all these things. And I was oh. just like, okay, I need to actually like, cause you know what I mean? Like you open your underwear drawer and you're like, well, I don't want to wear those. That's the bad ones. I want the good socks. Right. Do you guys have, I don't know. Do so girls are just like, are you, are you kidding? This is like every guy's life. To I didn't realize like, that women also experience the need to overhaul all socks and underwear. Oh well, my God. It's constantly. so annoying. I'm like, how did I, I mean, a lot of it is like these like weird PR things too that show up and yeah. I'm like, I don't want to wear the PR socks right. again. Those have weird designs <laughs> on them. I just want to wear my ratty Hanes boxers. Yeah. yeah the good and ones. And again. The good ones. Yeah. They've been broken the in. The ones dude. with the patina. <laughs> The, yeah, right. they're like top of the laundry pile. Ones. And you're sipping on a fat bottle of Mountain Valley sparkling. Yes, the best. Um, mm -hmm. Straight out the bottle, no glass. Yeah, yeah like it's only cheap. the best for it's Laura. It's crunchier that way. You <laughs> yeah. know, you don't lose any of the of the you know bubbles of, of the, the bubble of the mm -hmm. texture when you yeah. decant it. Um, okay, so that is a complete fit check. I think so. Yeah. 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 All right. What are you guys wearing? No, no, no. This isn't about us. <laughs> yeah. We do that in the afters. Yeah. If you're listening okay, and you want to okay, okay. get our fits. Uh, yeah, pay us to hear what we're wearing. <laughs> um, all right, let's get to the meat and potatoes, potatoes of the podcast. So, your newsletter, your Substack magazine, pronounced magazine, written, magazine. Um, what do you write about in your newsletter? I write about shopping. Okay. It's a fashion shopping newsletter. It's the, the name magazine magazine. Yeah. It's like a, it's definitely pronounced magazine, but the mm -hmm. name came because it was a double entendre of being a store, which is the French word magazine right. and a magazine. So I'm like, you know, it works. You're, like, this is, and, you're in the shower. You're like, this is clever as hell. Yeah, I'm like, it was a very <laughs> like writery moment of like, I was brainstorming what I wanted to call this newsletter that I was developing. And then I, Fuck, it was so embarrassing, but I was like literally like looking up words in different languages and like Spanish and French and whatever. Like, dot com yeah, like it's newsletter. really, it's like, hum <laughs> it, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but it's, it's like humiliating, but I did, you know, a lot of that kind of thing. And then when I saw Magazin, I was like, uh, like Light it's bulb. too, yeah. it was just too, it was too appropriate right that I couldn't get past it. And I just needed to launch the newsletter. So I was like, fuck it. Right naming it that having it stick. And then now I'm kind of stuck with it. Well, it's not the worst like, it's named fine. newsletter I've ever heard of. I'll yeah. tell you that. How many There's years some are, stinkers out there. How many What's years the has worst been? one? I'm not going to say. How many years uh, has it's been? It's been three. Okay. Three and it's, oh, full, wow. it's your full time thing. Yeah. It's my full time. Gig. What sets magazine apart from all the other newsletters in a pretty crowded space? Um, well, it was one of the first ones. So I definitely want to take credit Boom, there. Early. It was for early, show. early adopter of the Substack platform for fashion. Um, but I think that it's, it's providing both a perspective and a service. It's, we do a lot of reporting on top of just like styling and kind of like, mm -hmm. and like, uh, you know, taste kind of Right. elements as well um you can get your you can get shopping news there which mm -hmm. i think is really it's like that's the bread and butter of the of the newsletter is that you, like surfacing sales and like yeah exactly so like every week gems. there's like a, a news and sales send and it's just like here are the collaborations and launches and um you know like new brands that are we've you mm. know surfaced from the where past conscientiousness week. meets consumerism Ooh, uh, that's a free one yeah you okay. were like oh okay <laughs> I'll, I'll consider I try, it i'm trying it. yeah <laughs> 
And then the second part of that is like, <laughs> the second part of that is just like sales. So it's like, that's pretty self-explanatory. The good guys. shit. The good shit. Yeah. The, the place that you can just sort of scroll past. Right. The, but it feels like you're, you're reporting on the big dogs, like, you know, S and sale. Yeah. Uh, other stores. Um, but then it, <laughs> you got, it feels like, and I'm fucking ignorant of the women's wear space, but it feels like you're like kind of surfacing a lot of new brands, a lot of like small hidden gems as well. And is that like, is that what people, it feels like that's gotta be what people really fuck with in your newsletter. Just like the discoverability and curation by you. Yeah. I definitely think that that's what I'm most interested in personally. Like, I think that there's a lot, like there's an abundance of coverage of the luxury space. I don't think anyone needs more information. Like, luxury like has a, th a million PR people in employ. Like you're going to hear about them. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your friends or whoever like main mainstream media recommend that already. Mm -hmm. And then like on the other end, you know, people are sussing out what's affordable already. Like, I mean, like we all love Uniqlo. I don't really need to be the person to say like, have you heard of Uniqlo? Uniqlo yeah. cashmere. Yeah. On sale right Did now. you know that <laughs> Alessandra went to Valentino? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Like I don't, I'm not the person that's going to, bring so what is know, the subject um that resonates the most with your readers um i mean they do there is like a deals shopping excitement of course like yeah. essence sale mm -hmm. which i think is kind of entering a weird state right now because it feels like it's there they've introduced like a perma sale it's 360 days yeah. a year yeah which i'm like wait this kind of fucks they always with my uh, <laughs> the fucks with my editorial calendar yeah. right now because it was definitely like here's when the sale is on i'm here to report that to everyone they've but, leaned into the skid for sure yeah, it's kind of, I mean, like, you know, I think it was, it was bound to happen. I think yeah. that they were going to like, there's but, just, they have too much merchandise. But someone has to go through all of those fucking pages. So yeah. thank you for your You're service so because like, I'm not trying to do that. Shit. Have you ever reached the bottom of the essence hole? <laughs> I don't think, I think you can get like a hundred pages in and then you're like, wait, am I doing this right? <laughs> like I can actually like go into the designer pages and just yeah. look that way. Or I can go on a NSA watch list. <laughs> oh my God. Truly. Yeah. Uh, you're memefied then. Uh, What's a, maybe a topic or a brand that if you could snap your fingers, you would never have to write about ever again. Um, I mean, I kind of don't have to write about anything that I don't want to, to be honest. Really though? There's not like a, a like a, especially like a servicey thing where you're like, oh, again, I got to yeah. fucking um, do another intimates overhaul. Yeah. Or the readers are like really badgering you and you have to let the animals run the zoo. Okay. Well, what, okay. I kind of feel like I like let the, I don't, I don't have a good, let a tiger out of a cage or whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really not reaching for good metaphors yeah, no, right now. That hits, that hits. Yeah. Um, that was some wedding crashers. What's that? <laughs> Tiger got out the cage. Bradley oh. Cooper said oh. that. Yeah. yeah. So I like, I wedding crashed the newsletter. <laughs> um, there she is. Cause I, cause I, I wrote about the high sport pants. I did like, I don't know if you guys have come across this no, tell us more. phenomenon. There's like a pair of like $860 stretchy pants that are like popular among a certain type of woman rich bitches like rich bitches okay. yeah but they're kind of you know they're literally like a stretchy legging thing with a little flare yoga at the bottom pant? they're like a yoga pant and with a flare with a little flare and they're cropped where are they cropped they're cropped they're like cropped for me they're cropped like just above the ankle because i'm five five so okay. it's a little bit of a for like a regularly heighted woman <laughs> who they're designed for it's going to be like a mid-calf crop okay and do they so, make your ass look nice like why are they so popular i mean they don't make my ass look very nice <laughs> if i'm being honest but yeah I, there's some there i think there's a body type that they do look good on which is a, a very thin woman okay. like a real housewife type yeah exactly and so like i wrote about um I wrote about the phenomenon that they're really popular among newsletters and okay. um, kind of did like a little try on and I was like, I'm trying to make them work and sort of just seeing, you know, if I could make outfits around them. And I thought it was just like interesting because I was like, yeah, they're really popular among this, you know, kind of writer. Um, what's the deal with them? And then it was sort of like the deal that I found was inconclusive and <laughs> you know, they've gotten a lot of coverage since then. And like a lot of readers are putting like, the, the big thing in the chat, because Substack has a chat mm -hmm. option for like your community. It's like they'll put in the chat, like I've uncovered another high sport dupe. Like <laughs> Old Navy is making like the high sport pant. Is the brand dupe. called High Sport? Yeah, they're oh, called okay. High Sport and their pant is called the Kick Flare. Got it. And so like there, there's just a lot of talk about like people wanting this like $860 pair of pants that I'm like. That's crazy. I that don't really think. Oh, it's synthetic. They're good. And um, they're 850 Yeah, they're like a stretch. They have like a stretch to them. I think they're like cotton plus, you know. Yeah. Is that a big, is that a big, um, I don't know, element that the readers 
uh, kind of lean into is kind of like finding the dupes the dupe of like, culture, like yeah. oh, there's the row. And then there's kind of like, you know, row adjacent or like here's like an, an exact dupe of like whatever fucking rope, um, you know, the, the twinsies are putting out this season. Right. Is yeah, that- it is. It is popular. Like people will share these recommendations among one another. And it's like, I got it. Like you don't need to buy the row for every single piece of clothing right. you own. And I also feel like the row, if you were getting like a quote unquote dupe of it, it's like it's just a, it's just clothes. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It's not like it's not like a very like iconic Oh, you know, yes, quintessential <laughs> design. Yeah, exactly. And if it's like a dupe, it's kind of just like, well, then, yeah, that, that you just like have a garment from another brand. This is you know? fascinating and not to be sexist, but that's such a thing in, I feel like, the menswear community, at least in our Reddit, where every other post is, here's an expensive thing that is like happening. Para boots or some type of leather jacket. Where can I get the cheap version? Yeah. But- that's happening in your world as well. Definitely. Yeah. The row is a big one for it. The high sport ones. But are people like, are big. is it like a, is there like a stigma to like yeah. buying dupes or is it very much just like, I can't afford the row. I'm going to, but I want to look, you know, dress that way. I'm, I'm going to lean into dupe. It seems pretty dupe like, <laughs> it seems pretty accepted and friendly, like the dupe hunt in okay. the, in the chat. But I think it, I, I think it kind of like switched when like we used to call them knockoffs. Right. Right. Yeah. But then and like dupes, the word came around and everyone's like, well, it's not, it's not a knockoff. It's a dupes. It's an say, imitation. Is it, it's a duplicate. Not that flattering of a word, it's, though. it's really not, but it's, just, it's like, what is it? Like the Mad Men thing. It's like, it's, it's toasted yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's just yeah. a different Some word. Some guy in a boardroom at big knockoff ink was like, hear me <laughs> out. Yeah. Dupe. We're going to dupe it the, up. Yeah. The Timu exactly. team. Yeah. Dupe city. Crazy. Dupe city. <laughs> We're going to spell it R-H-O. It's the row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, is there, so like besides high sport, is there a brand that you find like, you know, the readers demand coverage of or demand like, um, constant, you know, deals and links on that, you know, they just won't die or they maybe like remain in the zeitgeist, like just to fly in your soup. Um, Totem, Kate. (laughs) Oh, um, real quick. Can I run my cool girly pyramid of brands by you? Yeah. I'm kind of making this up on the fly because I said it once kind of accurately and I totally forget it. I think it's like Kate. Totem, Ghani, Reformation. Reformation. That's all. Chloe Kardashian jeans. That's all we know. <laughs> that's all we know. That's that's literally all we know. Skims. How'd I do? How'd I do? Yeah, Skims. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think like that's sort of that's a good price point breakdown. Yeah. You know, like oh, that's a good ro- pyramid. The rows row at yeah, the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, but the row. Uh, right. But yeah, definitely. I don't know if Ghani is so relevant anymore. If mm. I'm being like honest. <gasps> Damn. They're not as I'm not, they're just not getting that many mentions. I mean, I, for me, it's, I do this like thing every month for the newsletter. That's like brand rank, yeah. which will, yeah, yeah. um, it, it'll kind of rankings. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just like a good, like temp check to like, see what, you know, what, what I'm writing about for whatever reason. And like what the Heat chat check. is bringing up and like Donnie just doesn't rank ever. Really? Yeah. It doesn't really get enough like, men- mention. Totem is like running it right now. Totem. Is, okay. So I'm like trying to think who was in the top of the most recent one. The row was, Oh yeah. Cost. Thank you. Shout out cost. Reader. I'm a reader. Big, yeah. Yeah. yeah shout out H and M. But cost yeah, is exactly <laughs> cost is like, that's dupe city. No, that's yeah. dupe city yeah. for yeah. sure. For sure. I mean, that, that was, <laughs> that we're was the mayors, bro. <laughs> yeah. That was definitely, and that was like a chat raised kind of, okay. um, kind of brand. Like, like they kind of mentioned like right it. Now? Yeah. 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 Fully. And it, and organically as well. You know, wow. like it, I know are that you readers doing... younger than like, like what, who, who, who talking about right now? I'm th- I think we're talking about What's people up, who chat? are like in their like late twenties <laughs> to Way like early forties. Oh wow. Okay. They're not, I don't think they're really younger. I mean like they're, I think that like in the pandemic you either went like TikTok or Substack mm. and like <laughs> if, if you were over a certain which age, way? Kinda, which way Western woman? Are you 30 or not? I mean, exactly, what side exactly. of 30 are you on? The wrong side or the right side? Basically. So I got, yeah. So I got all the adults. Um, <laughs> there, Congrats. Things, they have yeah. uh, purchasing power. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, and yeah, they can so subscribe sure. versus they watching have du- TikTok. Duke purchasing power, <laughs> yeah. also. You know. They're spending all their money on your subscription, dude. Oh the subscriptions are free. free. It's no oh, deal. that's right. That's so, how right. do you make money? Excuse is it, is it affiliate links? It's, it? a, it's affiliate links. Yeah. Oh. And I have like no shame about it, too. Cause I'm like, I have. We worked. need to learn how to do affiliate links. Wait, is there affiliate oh, link it, shame with other. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of affiliate link shame in like the Substack community. Hmm. Cause I think that there is like, there's a bit of a misunderstanding about like how affiliate links work from like some readers. Some readers believe that they're all just literally like 
paid placements or like oh. campaigns that you're engaged in with a brand, but you're like, I don't need to ever talk to a brand to include an affiliate link. You know, sometimes I can just do that through one of these platforms and, okay. you know, just do that on my so own. So it's not like pay for play. It's like, if you no. end up liking my recommendation and liking so much that you make a purchase, then I get my little kickback. Right. Right. Like mm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to include anything in the newsletter that I don't think is worth recommending. Right. And the fact that I can get some dollars from it, I'm going to take the dollars yeah, from it. Of course. You know? But have you ever kind of been like, oh shit, I don't really fuck with this, but it is like the high sport pants are popping. What if I throw a little dupe link in there? And yeah. I mean, I mean it's business. Yeah. I mean, definitely it's like, business I'm never going to center that though. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like I've, I've, I've from being in like mainstream media, like working on the affiliate side of things, like I've, I've oh, we're gonna seen talk what about the, that. Oh, okay. We're going to talk about that. I yeah. did go to LinkedIn. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Oh my yeah, God. We're talk about your pedigree. Wait, so so, so Totem <laughs> is the brand that if you wish, if you could, Erase it from your no, repertoire. That's maybe not fair, actually, because I wear a lot of Totem. If I'm being honest, is it no longer good? No, it's it's good. Okay. It's hit or miss, though. Oh, I will say, right. you know, a lot it's, of things are a lot of yeah, things. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to. Who do I want to be salacious towards right now? Like, who would yeah, I talk some shit? Wipe Feel free. off the face of fashion. Skims is Skims um, like? No, I don't mind Skims actually. But is Skims like crazy popular? Um, or is that just what the mainstream media wants us to believe? They're like, okay. Like, they're not, I mean, they, they we only- We fuck with Skims. Yeah. I Skims mean, I, men's. Skims I, men's. I hear, I hear they're a big menswear um, brand. The shit's pretty the good. Last, they've only, yeah. It's only been around for like, what, like two months or something? Uh, Skims maybe men's? four, yeah. Four? I think okay. like pretty, maybe, yeah. Maybe like four and like yeah. pretty young. Weeks, change. You know? yeah. yeah. I wore Skims boxer briefs yesterday. They were great. I have a pair of Skims boxers for women and they are very comfortable. Yep. They are like whipped fabric. They're really nice. Yep. Shapewear for like all genders. Skims. Yeah. But I mean, like, I don't think they're like enough in the just, you know, you, they're not, they don't have ready to wear. Right. They're not making I mean? like, like besides tees or whatever, at least exactly. for the guys. It's like just tees are, are, are good. It's just, it's just, it's just like, they're just like as a limit to how much you can talk about Skims, I think. For sure. Um, but but I is, don't know. is a Skims campaign the new magazine cover? <laughs> Skims did what? <laughs> is is getting is landing a Skims campaign for celebrity? Oh, the right, new magazine right. cover. Yeah, I, I mean, that. yeah, I guess so. I mean, I've heard that take of okay. like, uh, you know, you don't need to deal with the pesky journalist, and you no, get right, to right. like have the beautiful, yeah, you know, photos shot. It's like the new Calvin Klein. I don't know. Yeah, yeah probably true, something true. like that. Um, so magazine has been on a fucking tear of a press run recently. Oh, so but we, has it? what we want to know is, and it gets shout outs by like, uh, you know, in the. 90,000 recommendation newsletters <laughs> um, when they ask like famous people or, you know, well-known people what they're into. What we want to know is who's your most famous reader? Yeah. Um, Spill I got tea. shouted out by like Katie w Wachahachi. I don't mm. know how to say Waxahachi. it. Waxahachi. Waxahachi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was nice. That got me like a nice little chunk. Hell yeah. But of Lila... What, just like sad girls? Um, I don't know. <laughs> is that uh... even her music? I don't... Oh, I, I just yeah. listen to real hip hop. Maybe that can be that can be the intro music for <laughs> yeah. today for a change. Uh, we yeah. stopped doing the intro music because we kept, we got too many takedowns yeah. on YouTube. Oh shit! Yeah. Maybe okay. Waxahachie should diss Drake, and then <laughs> her shit will pop. But that's so that's a sick shout out. Yeah, she that was a nice one. It was just very public, you know, like very like I stand by yeah. a magazine, and I was like, cool, thank you, Katie. Um, mm -hmm. But Leela Moss follows the newsletter Instagram account, which was cute. Don't know who Who's that is. That? That's Kate Moss's daughter. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. Damn. I think that's her name. Lila yeah. Moss. Lila? Lila. Lila Like Moss. Stitch? Lila. Oh, Lila. Lila. Lila Moss. She Lila also, Stitch Moss. She's a model too, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Just, if Kate you Moss know. is your mom, it's For sure. what are you going to do? Yeah. So you yeah, must you have her have email, right? No, I don't, actually. Oh. I was emailing with Emma Roberts for a bit because she was Ooh. like, I read the newsletter. Oh, shit. I'm like, you should be on it. She's I don't think I'm really good at it. She's very famous. Yeah, I think she's maybe, she's the most famous person that I know. Is that Hermione? Probably. No, no. Um, <laughs> Who's Emma Roberts? I'm like, she's in Mad I Shit. I don't follow now. the celebrity. I know she's in so much stuff, but I can't Queens. think of it right now. She yeah. was. Uh, yeah. all right, let me bring up her <laughs> fucking filmography. Yeah, yeah. Just you guys. Let me let me pull that up, Jack. Okay, real okay. cinephile of here. Okay, I do want to ask you this question, which I think is a sentiment that a lot of people have stated, and I think there's some truth to it. Most recently, she was in uh, the um, critically acclaimed Madame Web. Oh, Madam Web, Madam Web, the one that everyone fucking <laughs> hated. Well, it depends Madame if you're Web. French or not. <laughs> Madam Ma Madame Web. Web. Okay, <laughs> what we want to know is, and this has been kind of like thrown out there, and it might just be like clickbait. It might just be like, oh, vibe shift um, type shit. But are newsletter writers the new influencers when it comes to getting consumers to make purchases based on like a trust and a and an authority that the writers themselves have built up? I mean. Possibly. I think that what's interesting is like with influencers, there wasn't as much 
tracking in terms of like what the impact was yeah. for these. I mean, if, if we're talking on like a, because it was a scam. Like a, yeah. was a the scam, scam. Yeah. Yeah. Words of Virgil, RIP. Um, but I think that like, there's just like a lot of like data on like the newsletter side, like you can track clicks and like you have the affiliate, you know, I feel like the affiliate game is just like been optimized for newsletters mm -hmm. more than like, I think like, influencers are even learning more about the affiliate side of things and like the era of newsletters. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just like my Do you take see on it. yourself as influencer adjacent? I think I think based on like where I'm sat at events and like <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's like they're, they're I think they kind of don't really know what to do with us right. yet. Okay. And I'm not sure, with the reporters. Yeah, like some sometimes yeah, sometimes I'm like near reporters because of like my media background. Sometimes I'm near the podcasters because they're like new media. Wait, podcasters are getting invited to stuff? Yeah, I was like, I mean, I was like <laughs> next to like Chris Black at like a thing, and then like on one side it was like podcasters, oh, and then on the it. other side it was like the newsletter girls, and I was like, you really are like yeah. you're just throwing us all like you know, we all just like, want to see it at the with. table. We're at the salon. Yeah. Um, what about new influencers becoming newsletter writers? Like, do you see this? <laughs> this happens. Trend happening? Yeah, yeah, this is happening. How angry does sure. that make you? I yeah. think, I mean, it doesn't make me angry at all because most of them like do like You gotta two, get mad. They do like two of them and then they're yeah. like, oh, then they, use, they, they speak right. to you in like six months and they're like, sorry guys, I'm going to try to really be back on top of it I now. I did two, news, two newsletters and that was my last two brain cells. So yeah. yeah. Well, we Maybe can't really talk. It's kind of like us with the numbers. <laughs> oh, well, but that's not our main thing. That's true. But I guess it's not an influencer's main thing either. Their main thing is like looking good. We do you guys have Instagram. a newsletter? Well, yeah, Growing we have Fitz a component. Newsletter? Oh. Kind of. Okay. Which we, is we a link. We have a semi regular uh, product roundup. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. I got to We're sign all up. about the copy, though. Right. Yes, exactly. The that's the thing. The well, right. The We're all about all of the stuff that's important. I think, I think, <laughs> Just yeah. Just not the frequency. <laughs> I think that like the, it's very like a natural selection thing. Like the influencers that can write, which I don't know who they necessarily, I mean, sure. So there's, uh, I'm sure there's some of them. Are you? Wait, I'm are like, there any that can even read? <laughs> <laughs> but I think like, you know, I feel like there, there's a reason that the, the most popular newsletters are like X fashion editors, mm, you know what I right. mean? It's like, you kind of need to like string a few words together. You need to be able to like, put an editorial calendar together. Good headline. It's, yeah. It's like, it is kind of, it's like, it's, it's real media work, you know, it's not yeah. like, it's not purely vibes, mm. which is like no disrespect to the vibe girlies. Cause right. like, you know, they do photo better than vibe. I do. And like we they can the do some vibe. You need a sprinkling of vibe. Yeah, yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. Like it's, you know, there's Your IG vibe is vibes, bro. Oh yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. It's the highest compliment I could pay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to, I'm going to, Soak in that one for a little bit, actually. <laughs> but do you feel um, any shift in as as like a newsletter writer? Like, it felt like that was kind of a, a uh, such a niche title. Like even right. a few months ago, yeah. even like twenty twenty three. Totally. Do you think that there's a shift as especially as like large media companies kind of make a push into newsletters themselves? Do you feel any like difference in the way you're being treated by brands? when they realize, oh shit, like she has the power to like really shape, um, I don't know, just like to, to influence. Yeah. yeah. She yeah, got that definitely. juice. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, like when I started the newsletter three years ago, I was doing a lot of educating to brands being like, I mean, I was kind of, I felt very reliant on like the institution, like me, institutional media of trying I was trying to like freelance more and like be right. like, but I also write for New York mag and I also write for the times and just kind of throwing those names in there. Like as much as I could, because I thought like that was what's going to hook, you yeah, know, like the brand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they did, they did give a fuck about that stuff, but then like, it just really, it did suddenly change. Yeah. Like all of a sudden I was like, Oh, I don't need to freelance really. Like yeah. this is kind of taking yeah. up my time. Like the newsletter is what people are interested in. And I was like, thank God. Cause I don't <laughs> really want to make $400 doing like <laughs> yeah, a yeah. little shopping story for who, you know, who knows who. But I think uh, a strategist, for it, example. It, yeah. <laughs> it also feels like magazine, like uh, you're being turned to as an authority where like the larger media companies are being like, quoting you yeah, as like right. That's the founder crazy. of magazine, Laura Riley has this to say. Totally. I think it's amazing. I'm like, I'm your competition. What are you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're I'm like, you're really like, for straws, they're platforming me and yeah. I'm like, thank you. But you, like your the readers is are coming from inside the house. Right. Yeah. I'm like, your readers are just coming to me. You're losing yeah, you them. You know? yeah. Yes. <laughs> you fools. Yeah. Like a, <laughs> like an audience miser over yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they um, have to, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I think it's also, you know, I don't, I definitely like, I'm appreciative of this of wave course. of like being, you know, spoken about as like an expert or authority, but, um, it's, um, 
yeah, I think it's just like once the ball gets rolling, like you're quoted in one yeah. place, they'll mm-hmm. just be like, oh, this is who we talk to for Absolutely. these stories. And you now know? you're no longer like, oh, I used to write for the this, there, this. You're like, yo, magazine writer. My name is my name. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm standing yeah, exactly. on motherfucking business yeah. over here. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I say this days. exactly. That's yeah. the old days. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask about the future yeah. of magazine. When will magazine start covering menswear? Okay. I'm so glad you asked this. <laughs> <laughs> when is it going to happen? So yeah. we, okay. So I love reading it, but I'm like, ah, uh, okay. Like, I know, of, I know. I give, I give, I give like a yeah. little menswear kind of like inclusion every like once in a while. This but it's like, doesn't come in my size. It hasn't, yeah, yeah it hasn't been <laughs> enough. You know, it's I not can't enough. I the other way, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. It's so my strong hand. <laughs> is menswear in the future of magazine? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's actually coming <gasps> very soon. Very soon. Some announcements? Yeah, exclusive announcement. Um, Magazine has officially hired a menswear columnist (gasps) who's going to be starting with their first piece coming out on April 19th. So all the dudes, yo, chat, if you're watching, yo, chat, if you're listening, (laughs) subscribe to Magazine now Mm -hmm. so you can see that you were there before Magazine started uh, Magazine You don't want to miss the first. Yeah. Our writer is Louis Cheslaw. Tell us about Louis. He's he's awesome. He's, um, he comes from like the New York mag world. He was in-house at the strategist for years. So he like knows the like, so the Amazon com- links. Game. yeah, yeah. He's going to be <laughs> linking out to the Haynes tees on Amazon Ooh. exclusively. Let's go. Uh, no, no, now he's free. Yeah. Now he's broken free. The Bezos fucking uh, shackles, <laughs> totally. right? Now yeah. he can fucking let his shit ring. Exactly. Yeah. I'm um, like, Thank he God. can, you know, the world is his oyster now yeah. for sure. But he's kind of, you know, he's, he's, he's his ass from New York mag. Is that what the, is that what's happening to me right now? The newsletter, the newsletters are poaching from the institutions. He's, he's a free Free agent. Okay. I will. Uh, you know, he flew the coop earlier. He knew it was good for him. He's like, I he saw the get writing out on the wall. Yeah. yeah, he did exactly. And now he's kind of a bit of like a in newsletter nomad. He's contributing to a few other. Oh. Um, he's. He, he, do you guys read? Um, Why is this interesting? That's I think one of, so. They're they're good. He contributes to their them sometimes. There's honestly two. There's a lot of newsletters. I'm there not gonna are say too a lot many. of I'm not gonna say too many. There's a lot of newsletters. I'll yes. say it. There's too many. <laughs> And some of them still unsubscribe. So Louis yeah. is a British gentleman, I believe, correct? Yes, yeah, he's a Brit. A um, What's yeah. so, how would you describe his taste level? Like, what is he into? I, I mean, he's. I, I, I did when I was looking for a newsletter writer. I was looking for like a few months actually, just because oh. I wanted to like make you know the right oh. connection, and also kind of like got distracted for a little bit, frankly. We all do. Um, but I was like, I sent out some edit tests to like a handful of of, of guys that applied, and like his was his definitely the best. Hell and yeah. what I really liked is that he can speak to like a lot of different scenes without mm. being beholden to them. Sure. It's like he can, he's, he's like a researcher, you know, he's an editor. He's like a, he's, he's able to like explore and understand without being like, I can only speak to my personal he style. He has the media background of being like, okay, exactly. I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta cater to everyone. Yeah, exactly. So like he's able to, I think he's able to like bring a really cool perspective that like I wasn't able to bring to menswear and magazine. Like I feel like I love covering menswear personally, but it's, I just, it, there's so much happening in women's wear that it's right. like, I can't. And not much in menswear. I'm, oh, yeah. It's there's a bit so easier. much going on. Uh, is there? I really? Feel, I mean, the thing is like, if I was, if I was just dressing in menswear all the time, I would wear like La Mer and Aura Lee and like that's kind of like two the very end, uh, good fucking brands. They're yeah. great. They're amazing. And if you but find some like, sales, let me know. I will, <laughs> I will. Send them our way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they do go on sale. They're out there. Um, but Louis just has like the edits coming from media. He has the ability to be like to break out of just his own tunnel vision. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like he knows the space. He like knows what's going on in it. Like a, on many Twitter different and scenes. So I know he has good taste. Oh yeah. Exactly. See, he's got to keep up with. I'll with, be investigating later, <laughs> Louis. Do your own the, jur- the jury's still out, bro. <laughs> Do your own research. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he can, he can cover like kind of, you know what I mean? Like when you think about like the menswear space right now, like there's you guys and I feel like you come from, I mean, I don't know if I'm like gonna, I feel what? like you come from kind of like a little post ironic fashion oh, space. Oh yeah, maybe. Right? You know? We have so. fun with it. Where are we yeah. now? We fuck around. We, <laughs> and we've found out. Yeah. <laughs> Is he, so how... It will the magazine men's and I'm sorry that if I'm like using that, just force foisting that upon you. Well, magazine the men's sends is that? Do you call them sends? I call them sends. Yeah, some people Full call them send, a, bro. But some, some people call them letters. I'm like, no, or like I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna like send you a, the letter. Okay, or what is it? Some people say sletter. I that's think a that's a Joe Wire, 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 Wire thing. Yeah, yeah. The sletter. Yeah. Um, Slitting. will 
the magazine will kind of be in the same format as like what your the format that you've pioneered We're, we've developed like a new kind of template for what Ooh, the column is going to look like and it's going to it's going to be I mean just like a preview here but it's going to like start with like a five things kind of like here or like just like five products sick like bullet points will like all clothes this is cool yeah fashion based actually right. you know what maybe not necessarily I want because dudes These love stuff needs, too yeah, yeah they need home goods great. the boys need yeah. stuff for the crib yeah for sure I mean if there's an especially manly home good that a dude might need maybe we can right. throw it in there yeah. but like uh, magazine covers home wear also yeah, just sure. organically in there so Did like maybe include any skate deck walls in his <laughs> edit test street that's, toys that's, that's a red flag uh, big red flag yeah, right, skateboard right. decks for yeah, the wall like a spray toys, sneaker display the, cases oh my god uh, what are those little um like toys that you kind like of can bricks, collect. Cause F- Funko pops. Cause, yeah. Oh, Funko when you pop, say you things. collect, we do not collect <laughs> yeah. them. Laura. I'm like the men. <laughs> Put out one toy in here and, and don't look point at my MF doom mask. please. <laughs> <laughs> there's nary a toy in this crib. I'm like, there's a candle that's shaped like a little guy. Yeah. Those are from uh, the Ukrainian homies, you know, shout out Ukraine. Yeah. Um, Ukraine. Oh yeah. Right. But okay. So starts out with five products. Just yeah. punch in the just face. Like, yeah. Like go. these are like things that are, good just for whatever reason maybe they're they're super timely maybe they're not it doesn't matter these are just good things good shit then we have like the meat of the column which is going to be like a medium form Mm -hmm. let's say it's not super super like short snappy bloggy then you got to go and you're like wait i I didn't learn anything you know um but like that's super open-ended like i the first one is going to be louis introducing himself in his personal style which i'm really excited to read because i'm like that's a hard thing to do yeah Yeah, it is we ask a lot of people like (laughs) Describe your, your, how would you describe your personal style? And I would say 75% of the time people cannot answer that question. That's like the worst question to answer because like no matter how I you say worst question to ask. And I was oh my say, God. No, well, no. It's okay. I mean, know, we've stopped asking by the way. It's kind of like, <laughs> what's your worst quality about yourself at a job interview? Like, well, I, I dress too well. I right, describe right. my personal style as fucking the drip sick. God yeah. fly beast mode. Pretty fucking sick. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you kind of fall back on like tropes about yourself right. or like kind yeah. of cliche. High like, low. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Like sort of minimal but classic, but also experimental. Yeah. But like what Versatility, I'm like. Versatility timeless. timeless. Yeah, timeless. Oh my God. Personal <laughs> style. I have a big bone to pick with just personal style Go in general. Off, so what's, what's your personal style? I mean, oh God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what's, how would you describe French. personal style? How would you describe your yeah, French? Yeah. yeah, I'm just so French. I can't. But okay, sorry, it. I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. about uh, the, your your musings on right. larger personal style. Oh, um, Oh yeah, just personal style. I feel like they're, I mean, it's happening in a big way in like the newslettering space, the women's newslettering space, like this investigation of like, we need to have our personal style, but I'm like, but why does everyone's personal style look the same? Hmm. You know, like, why are we calling it personal style? You know, like, I feel like this wasn't as like, I feel like if you looked at like the Google trends of this um, term, yeah. it just spiked in the last like two years. And I'm just like, I don't think I can deal with this anymore. Like, are you looking it up? <laughs> no, I'm going to write it down. I'm going to look oh, okay. it up later and I'm going to okay, include okay. it. In what is like quiet support. luxury? And it's yeah, exactly. It's like dewy, a, no makeup, makeup, like, right. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's I'm basically it. like investment pieces, but the investment pieces are all like, you know, like the row Margot bag and like, and it's kind of just like, why is this, that's like, a good bag, though. Why are we? It's a great bag. <laughs> if someone wants to buy me this bag, I will, you know, definitely adapt my personal style to it. Of course. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I just, it's just, I think that there's, it's, if you want to look put together, that's fine. That's great. But just like, I don't think there's any need for us to all like cling on to this. Like, this is my personal style. Well, it's almost you know? like uh, Kamala Harris. You think you've just fell out of that coconut tree. You existed <laughs> in the context of the coconut tree, like personal style. You, you have to investigate the larger context of like everything else going on. Right. Cause no one just fucking pops up out of, no coconut just pops up out of nowhere. Right. No. Yeah. Your personal Silly style is influenced by whatever is going on. And it's like fine for that to happen. I mean, like yeah. it's how it's what trends are. And it's, it's like okay what if fashion you're is. Yeah. <laughs> I think, well, that's individuality. Like we all agree that when it comes to fashion, it's paramount, but people don't want to admit that they've been influenced or they're trying to dress right. like someone else. Cause then they don't right. want to be the exact opposite of that. So they're like almost feigning it by using that term. Personal right. Style yeah. It's like, but it's yeah. like you can be influenced. The it's influencer right. economy didn't, balloon to whatever billion number of dollars by nobody getting influenced. Yeah. Right. You know, just own it. Yeah. Just say you're a Larry clone. Do you have Laura clones? Do I have Laura clones? Yeah. Like, especially because people do have really access to like the things that you have bought yeah. and tried on in Coastline, right? There. Yeah. There. I mean, I, I, I I think that it's only happened like once or twice when like someone buys a little too much of the same oh, stuff that oh, I got. Oh. But most of the time it's like, it doesn't really, you know, I don't think it really enters my orbit if people are, 
being influenced by me, let's but it's say. it's flattering or it's offensive? Um, no, it's not offensive. I mean, it's definitely like I've made it my career to be like, hey, I bought this for right. myself. You should buy it too. It would be weird if I was suddenly like, you know, defensive about it, I guess. Do but. you ever drop a banger send and then do you ever send a banger and then like two weeks later you start seeing like, oh, he's like, you know, gray trout, pleated trousers start, pop, start popping up a little more heavy in New York. Mm. That ever happened? That's going to happen. I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I, I think the thing is like, I think that I don't think that I'm like setting the agenda so aggressively. I'm sort of just translating a lot of stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm sharing news. I'm like, this is what's going on. Like I myself am influenced too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. Who influences you? Um, Oh God, that's a or inspires you. That's a that's my grandmother. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. It's like one of those What's like Andrew's letter. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, I feel like I don't really. I don't know. I have like a collection of screenshots from the girlies on Instagram right. and like um, things that I've saved like from lookbooks and things. But I don't know. I, I think it's more of like a nebulous influence kind of thing. And like maybe right. I should investigate it a little more. Well, um, we talk a lot about like you have people that talk about clothing descriptively and you have people that talk about clothing prescriptively. And mm -hmm. if you just are enthusiastic about something and you just want to share that, totally. that's always better than being like, this is what you need. Right. These are the things that's what's the fun in that. And there are some people, guys, girls, whatever that do need that. But I personally speaking, and I think I could speak for James, this podcast, yep. we <laughs> love when it's just, Hey, this is what we're into. If you're in it too, that's fucking great. Get on board. Yeah, a million percent. I feel like that's just been like such a core tenant to the newsletter since yeah. I started of just like, I'm never going to tell you what to do. I'm never going to tell you what to buy. Here's the information. Do with it whatever you yes. want. Do you get people though that are like, hey, just literally just tell me what to buy. Like, <laughs> Kind of. Tell me ABC that so I can put this fit together. Tell whatever. me, mother. Yeah, yeah I mean, kind mother of. Riley. I mean, I definitely see like things that I will personally wear on the newsletter or like shout out that I have bought. Like those are the things that like I'll see in like a, the affiliate data. Like those are the things that just sell the best. Absolutely. So people want to like look to see like how a person is going to use a piece. Right. So that definitely is like a big influence moment, I guess. I want to go back to menswear real quick. Oh, sorry. Did we ever finish like kind of the, the so we have the medium like oh, yeah. format and then is there anything else in? Yeah. And then it, there's will like this a, be a week. What's the frequency? Is it a it's going to be monthly okay. to start, but then I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, let's get the guys on board. Let's yeah. ramp it up. You know, we're still like, it's still like, we're still testing the waters. Right. Like magazine but, has yeah. men readers already and it has from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And like, I, actually it's like the guys that'll come up to me in public places and be like, I love the newsletter. I read it. And I'm like, why? Like, <laughs> What's wrong that's with so you? so cool. But I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I'm amazed that they've been reading it for so long without me giving them enough, right. you know? Just sticking on interaction real quick. Uh, and you mentioned your chat a lot. Are there like readers that are almost like too engaged where it's like Stan culture to a unhealthy level of, I don't, again, we talked about like people maybe copying you, but like, is there... How does that work in the, cause with podcasting, I'll be the first to admit it's all about the parasocial relationship with right. the audience newsletter, different medium, but sometimes similar message. But I'm just wondering if you get like people that are like, they want too much like personal details or they pry or, um, I don't know. no, actually like, I feel like I don't do a ton of personal mm -hmm. details, like personal life stuff in the newsletter. So I feel like I haven't set that precedent. Okay. So people can't like, Smart. You said boundaries. Expected we learned something me. from you. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, um, I don't know. Honestly, like every interaction I've had with like with readers has been so positive. And I feel like I don't I'm not even just saying that to be like, I love I have the best community ever. <laughs> but it's just like no one's been weird, you know? That's great. And everyone's been really like no one gets kind of awkward or strange about the whole thing. Like people are like very comfortable being like, Hey, like read the newsletter. Like nice to meet you. And they're, I don't know. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> see ya, nice. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's well, cool. I feel man, like, what's that like? <laughs> yeah. are you, do you guys, you guys like have like stands, you have like crazy, um, nah. no, we getting, love like, our, I mean, we've only, yeah, we love our chat. There's only been like a couple attempts made on our life. So like, yeah. it's not crazy. No, <laughs> yeah. You want to know how I got these scars? Yeah. Um, okay. So after the, so it's monthly and you have five things and you have a medium format, mm -hmm. just kind of like what he, what, what's that again? Just like what he's into right now. Yeah. I mean, it could be like, anything basically okay. like that's going to change just depending on like what's in the air you right. know like if there's an area if it's like men's week or something like that can be a sure. focus point or whatever and or if there's there anything, just a conversation yeah and then what's and then the last bit is like a it's going to be like a mini kind of feature on a guy you know oh, like someone who like influences sick. or like who's we are available Louis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. i know we can reciprocate we'll dm i don't know if you can dm yet 
But I'm gonna again. I'm gonna figure that. Yeah. Okay. What, yeah. Okay. What about? Uh, you mentioned your love of menswear. What do you do? You have any favorite menswear brands right now? I mean, I do. Like I said, I do Orly love like Le Mer and Orly. I like. Um, oh my god, I'm forgetting his name right now, which is so embarrassing. It's a um, dude. I'll circle back to that. Mugliano. Yeah, love okay. Mugliano. Mm -hmm. You guys follow? No. He's like young Italian designer. Oh. Maybe I like the Italians for the men, and then the French for the women. Interesting. Know, you know, got to divide. Yeah. Um, let's see who else. What am I chopping? Um, God, I should have come. I feel like these are these no. are going to be like the questions. You just I knew put us on coming. to Magliano, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Mamma Mia. Sounds like a soccer player. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's a good one. I feel like All he's right. fun to watch. Yeah. Check him out. What do you think um, is happening in menswear right now that you actually like and you wish that maybe women's wear could take both in like the media, the design, like every facet of it? Like what could women's wear maybe borrow from the boys? I mean, I think... <laughs> um, I think maybe I'll answer this from like more of like the media around yeah, menswear question because I think like I was when I was kind of starting my media career, I was very influenced by how menswear was covered. Mm. And actually, and I feel like this is gonna circle back to a hint from the beginning of this, but a project you guys were doing like years ago, which was fashion bro. Yep. Yeah. Fashion bros. Bros. Yeah. Um <laughs> Oververse. Like that. Yeah. That era was like really, I mean, like the four pins and like, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like complex. What was going on in fashion media then from the menswear side of things, like you didn't see happening in women's wear at no. all. Like it was extremely like, we are, you know, it felt like this like legacy, like print media Ivory was still Tower. dedicated. Yeah, very, very much yeah. so. Or like kind of um, infantilized mm. kind of, <laughs> yes. you know, women's wear stuff. And it was just like, it was never really about the, item itself, right. you know, it was like never about the clothes. It was about the vibe. It was about the brand and the marketing. And so I feel like when I entered into media from the women's wear perspective and still how I'm thinking of it is just like, it needs to actually center the clothes. Mm -hmm. It needs to center the stuff. You know what I mean? Like that's what we're like the gear trading. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the under the hood mentality. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Greasy, ladies. It's the like, um, the who who what's his name Jacob Gallinger yeah. or whatever he wrote he, I just remember like a piece he wrote about like a another ode to a blue shirt or something uh, this was so long ago well he is a clothing file for yeah. sure yeah exactly and I just like feel like and then yeah, he wants like, to have sex with his clothing. Uh, oh, I'm amazing! Kidding. I'm, just uh, I'm just kidding, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy for him. Whatever you're into, I mean, Whatever sexuality is a spectrum. Yeah, different strokes. <gasps> but that boy be putting the shit on, dude. Yeah. He do. He It'd do. be bussing. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but I, I kind of I just like the like, like hey, the I love this of it. Yeah, I mean, like I love the like granularity of mm. it. You know, it's just like it's not like the I'm, nerdiness. Yeah, really. Nerd, yeah, truly. truly, truly, truly. And I feel Dark like that's shit. yeah. I feel like that's only kind of like a little bit coming into women's wear now. Like it's taking a long time to bring that over. I think it's just like a lot of money and vibes yeah. you know like that'll do it i don't know i never understood like there's like there's so many ugly handbags that are so popular <laughs> just because of like the vibe you know prescription of right. it all is it know? like not cool or sexy to be like really into the thing in like an obsessive way manic way i mean i think that there there definitely is this like you know the like la garçon women are like more appreciative of the thing itself mm -hmm. and like the the brands like the Tara Badteen and like Casey Casey and like the row women too, you know, like they kind of cross over okay. to like the general consumer and like the nerd consumer in <laughs> women's wear. Um, ladies is nerds too. Yeah. Ladies Don't brush your glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get what you're saying because it's like in, in women's wear, if you're working in the industry or your consumer, it's like, chicer and cooler to be like aloof about it right versus being like i really like it and i want to fucking nerd out right right or it's like you just you buy the thing because it's sort to. of yeah i mean like i don't but, know but is that not it just feels objectively like cooler to be like kind of just like yeah like i'm aloof about it <laughs> yeah. right I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> i don't know i think it's cool to like like the thing it's you cool know to care. it's cool to care. i mean i, I yeah. definitely like i, I obsess over being like, oh, I've always owned that. I didn't just buy, I don't go shopping. Mm. You know what I mean? Like shopping is embarrassing kind of. Really? I mean, there, don't you think that there's something about it? It's like you buy a thing and you're like, this is my new thing. Uh, you know what I mean? It's the only thing that brings us joy. I feel like, <laughs> I don't know. But then like you, but then when you're like <laughs> yeah. engaging with the thing around other people, you're like, oh, this. Oh, this whole oh, thing. Right, oh, right, totally. This, you yeah. know? You're like, that's why it's like walking with a shopping bag is like the worst feeling ever. Oh, oh. really? Yeah. For dudes, I feel like it's like, yo, what do you get? And you're like, oh dude, man, look dude, what I got. Dude. Like. This oh little, I, I got this, I got, I was literally bought this shirt yesterday from Intramural and uh, ran into some friends and they're like, what do you get? And I like whipped it out. I'm like, oh, da, da, da. Oh my you God. Know. Yeah. Frank. I don't know. I feel oh, me, so I'm just like, guy. Yeah. yeah. Just, just so honest and earnest. Everywhere in front of everyone. <laughs> yeah. 
Do you think that there's any cues you think menswear could take from the women's wear side of things, whether it is the media or the mm. <laughs> stop fucking nerding out over shit? No, type keep, shit. keep fucking nerding I'm gonna, out. I'm gonna over stuff shit. you in a fucking locker. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. What can men take from women? Two way street. You yeah, because like, what are you seeing in our world that you're just like? I mean, Ugh. I think you can. I think you could live a little more. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like in menswear. Okay. It is like there is like maybe like I don't know a handful of archetypes in men's mm. space, and like in women's, it's a little more infinite. Yes. There is a little more. I'm gonna say it personal style you know that does come out in it women's wear. It is hard wear. being a guy, actually. I yeah. take it all back. Yeah. We have it so tough. Yeah. You do. I like that, though. You're right. There are free these... men. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag fr- free the guys. I, know, I was like, we are going in this direction. Free the here. Fellas. <laughs> You're right. I mean, especially if you uh, consume a lot of menswear on the internet, right. we call them like the explore page type fits, where it's like every yeah. couple of months or maybe even quicker there's like a new archetype and we make fun of them at the end of the year in our like weekly or our weekly our yearly award show yeah. but like there are these like okay if i'm gonna be cool i gotta be the silver lake mechanic right. i gotta be the whatever. i gotta wear a double breasted jacket over jeans like, yeah right very sick bro yeah. yeah you're kind of like essence models boxes. you know yeah, yeah. Exactly. well better styling or even or or oh you follow the same mood boards as everyone else yes exactly exactly oh, you saw and the that jeffrey epstein photo yeah <laughs> now you, and you dress exactly like him now exactly wait is that a thing yeah dude oh. you got huge fits off stop that guy it, great style oh no it's kind of like it's kind of like you know upper are we east even side allowed pre- to uh, talk about Ameri- it yeah, yeah separate the art about- from the artist <laughs> yeah oh my we can talk god about whatever we want uh we wow. run this shit <laughs> i'm like are we gonna get canceled because no, like, we gotta if, fit if off you look like old photos of him with anyone like but it's that. like oh, early really? 90s airport fits yeah it's, it's the same yeah yeah, yeah for thing. sure Levi's that's very endemic to the women's wear space also kaya gerber style basically he was the og kaya gerber exactly you heard it here first from laura riley jeffrey epstein was the og kaya gerber facts um give him a celine deal let's let's tap into the zeitgeist real quick so an anonymous bozo cowardly wrote a very mid, ill-informed essay on the state of menswear recently from the perspective of a tasteful, well-informed, cool girl writer. What are your thoughts on just guys who are into menswear? Ooh. Where that's their thing. That's their subculture. Their hobby. I mean, I think it's great. I mean, like my subculture is fashion too, right? Like, I don't know. We picked it. It's our right. thing. We're allowed to like, So no know. double standard. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And like, you know, this, this, uh, anon guy, he will, will not be named. Wink. I yeah. think that I think that like we know who you are, bro. Yeah, I think it was like it was fun <laughs> and it was cheeky, but it was a little bit low hanging fruit. It got you the know? people going. I'll yeah, say that. for sure. Yeah. In the same way that the the follow up article, the like media parties went, oh I was like, well, Lord. duh, media people love talking shit on each other and being the subject of shit talk. You know yeah. what I mean? Though I did read good. that like, and was like, I never want to party with this woman. She sounds terrible. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, <laughs> show up. Take also, it sounds like it's a uh, more writer, yeah, type media than yeah. like lifestyle media yeah i guess so i don't know do you guys yeah. go to the you, go, you guys are at the media thing events yeah. and like it's never that boring i mean it's yeah. not like i don't i'm not dying to go if it's at a good restaurant i'll go right yeah, right i want to eat the food i'm like how good are the drugs yeah maybe i'll go i don't know <laughs> at the 5 p.m thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> at the happy hour right <laughs> but uh so do you think that guys that are into men's are like that's their thing because my thing is like every subculture had its fashion was like uh secondary to like the the activity skating fucking punk rock punk rock right yeah any the musical goths. genre yeah mm-hmm. um like each tribe had its look and then yes now like menswear is its own like fashion kind of was spread wide across every subculture but now it, it is the thing right and like fucking you know nba players are like you know uh Whatever, you but still focus on fashion that, yeah. even more so than as much as like their game or their personal brand. <laughs> so like, it, it work on your jumper, brother. <laughs> if a dude is into menswear, that's his thing, yeah. and there isn't like a, a sticky, like centralized, like act behind it, except like getting fits off and continuing to buy more shit. Is that does that? Is that okay? I mean, of course it's okay, okay. You know, I mean, like it definitely. Like I think it's sort of it's happening in the menswear space. It's also happening to the culture at large in terms of like how we relate to fashion. It's mm. like the TikTok aesthetic movement of it all. It's like, 
the aesthetic is untethered to any kind of uh, social right. connection exactly. or whatever. Like we used to be it's all costumes. Yeah. Like we used to, it used to stand for something right. and now it's kind of like, country. we used to be a real country. We used to be a real internet. If you're in even, cottage you, know? core, you don't turn your own butter. I'm calling you out for being a poser. Okay? <laughs> well, they are, they are actually turning their Fuck. own butter. These trad wives, they're really like going full on. You don't yeah, watch Real Housewives they, of Salt Lake City? They may be no. like the only ones really living oh, it, shit. frankly. Okay. Yeah. Damn. The trad wives and the, and the cottage cores of them all. But I mean, yeah, it's like, it's like when the reference point is kind of like just becomes itself in a right. way. It's sort of like very Ouroboros, like snake eating mm. its own tail. Like we're, you know, we're kind of stuck. I don't really have an idea of like how we're getting out of this, but sure. we are in terms of just like this nostalgia loop and this like reference, you know, untetheredness and we're all floating around kind of space, but it's like nothing is really pointing to anything other than itself. And I think it's a like interesting and like a little meta mm-hmm. and like maybe I think will lead to something more yeah. interesting. You don't need to have the answers. I mean, the first step is admitting yeah. there's a problem, which we established. Right. How we get out of it, you be the judge. Or that's it's our like, entire podcast. <laughs> is it even a problem? I think it just is. It's just the state right. of what is. You know what I mean? It's like, you like culture can't be wrong in a way. You there's, know what I there mean? are some points where it is like, yes, there are people that like, they're the, the assholes that buy the $1,000 thing to wear the $1,000 thing so people know they're wearing the $1,000 thing because yeah. they bought the $1,000 thing. Well, that's always and been And we've always yeah. been against those those assholes right yeah. and they've always been there. they've always been there um but yeah it felt like it was just like bro get a fucking get a hobby yeah <laughs> yeah for sure for it was sure. it was projecting at its finest for sure i mean i don't know i think like any yeah i think like any human with any interest should diversify their you know mm-hmm. their actions and their activities and kind of like maybe like look to yeah. what different sources for their information and inspiration yeah but i think it's like you know it, it i don't know like do you, are you guys in a scene? Would you say? We are the scene. You are the scene. Yeah. <laughs> but Jessica confirmed. James said that, not me. But Jessica, he's correct. We are the scene. Yeah. Je- I mean, you created a scene, right? Like you have like I mean, menswear yeah. guys that are, they're dressing for three. Are you, fits, bla- are you right? blaming us? No, no. I'm just saying are it's like, problem? Are, you know what I mean? It's like maybe instead of like no. um, the skaters and the punks, there's the throwing fits there's guys. The podcasters. Now. There, yeah, are the, there are the throwing fits guys. Yeah. And so shout out, shout out to get all some them. hobbies like alcohol and drug abuse. What yeah. The yeah. It'll, so, okay. So Jessica confirm the cool girl, well-informed, <laughs> tasteful writer, uh, guys who are willing to menswear a okay. Yeah. It's cool. Good. It's good. It's good for me. All right. And you could book it and you should sign up for the magazine newsletter. And, and now that, if it's Patreon. And now that you have an offering for the dumber sex, <laughs> do you have any other like grand aspirations for magazine now that like you're going to start catering to the other half of the population? Oh for man, finally? I want to do so much. I don't know. Where do we go from here? Laura? I don't know. It's kind of crazy. It's like the, I mean, it's like not like, like the newsletter world is just blogging, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just blogging that goes to you. So I don't know. I feel like we, you can you can look at the past and like look at what like the arc of that was like and see where everyone landed, which was kind of like sometimes back in mainstream media and sometimes like creating like these like larger, mm-hmm. you know, platforms. Are you going to pivot to video? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, no, I've been laid off in the pivot to video. I'm still scarred. We all have. Yeah, yeah exactly. What about podcasting? No, it's no? not for me. Uh, no, I mean, like, I'm honestly like, how do you guys like talk for so long? You know, narcissism. I guess so, I yeah. guess you're tired. Unbridled narcissism. I'm yeah. also just like so used to being like, I can edit myself like a thousand times before anyone reads anything that I think. Do you do that feel. before? Like, are you really careful or really self-critical of your writing before you publish it out to literally over 23,000 subscribers. I, I think it's the number on Substack. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I liked it. Sometimes I'm like really late with it and it's like already like a day late and I'm just like, it's just gotta go like here, take right. it, whatever. It's out of my hands now. Send. But then, yeah, exactly. But like when I'm thinking about like there, the, like when I'm thinking, I don't know, sometimes I'm just like, what the fuck did I just write? You know? And I, I, I do kind of agonize a little bit about the writing side of things. Like I do want to like, get my point across in a very specific way. And it's not always clear what the entry to that is. Mm. Like I'll rewrite the lead like a thousand times before I'm like, Oh, what? I don't even <laughs> need to say any of this. Yeah. Like, here's what I'm actually saying. Right. And it takes me a few stabs sometimes to get there. So, so you are self-critical then to James's point. Like, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, self-editing. So yeah. I mean, I think it's good to revisit instead of just like, I don't know when you have the capacity to like tweak a little bit more, like yeah. why not get in there? I think it's just, you know. James mentioned the fucking numbies that you're putting up like 
Do you have a little bit of an ego? Be real. Are you like gassed on your shit? Come oh my on. god! Talk your I shit. mean, Go I'm on. excited that it's working. Right. You know what I mean? To be like self-employed that's, and yeah, like that's super cool to me. I mean, like that's like the best part of the job that is like just kind of felt like I made up this like format that I got to like hit publish on and then I get to keep doing it right, yeah. as long as I want to now. Well, even if you have an ego, you're one of the few newsletter writers that isn't constantly sucking their own dicks <laughs> in, the, true. in the copy. <laughs> Really? Oh, dude. You oh haven't you haven't realized this trend where like the only people now more insufferable than podcasters, because I don't want to pot call the kettle black here, <laughs> are fucking newsletter writers, dude. Oh my god. These motherfuckers are out of control. Yeah. I you mean like motherfuckers well, are out of control. They're, they're, they're all, y'all are y'all own hype men, right? Which yeah, is totally yeah. fine. Yeah, Whereas, maybe like, we I'm are ego tripping right now. Cheerleader. <laughs> Hater loosely. slash hater. <laughs> slash hater. And he's his my biggest cheerleader, right? Yeah. We have yeah, each that's other. True. But you know, yeah. most newsletter writers, they're just in their fucking hovel, just yeah. scribbling out the latest Totally, scent. totally. Yeah. But then we also have to be our own biggest haters, too. You know right. what I mean? You see a lot of self-deprecating <laughs> content out there being like, just little old me, like, yeah. overly oh, what, humble, me? you know? I'm just but, a girl. Yeah. Um, I'm baby. Wait, so what other... <laughs> so you're not going to do podcasting. What else do you hopefully one day hope to have under the magazine Ooh, I'm empire. like big, big picture. I have no idea. Store? Honestly, I want to just keep making money. Yeah. But, um, uh, money. All money. And I'm money. like the magazine, the store. Magazine, the magazine. Um, no, that like overhead sounds crazy. Yeah, facts. I don't know. I mean, like I'm seeing, you know, you're seeing what's happening with stores just full stop, and you're like, why would I do that? That yeah. sounds Online crazy. Store? It's even worse. Okay. <laughs> you know? What about like your own brand? Brand? Yeah, I want to eventually. Let's I have go. like an idea for like a line that I won't get into nice. yet, but it's like yeah, I have. No, it's like, give it the sauce it's away. like I. It's like my you know next like later life kind of thing. Fuck like yeah. I really want to throw everything into that. At some Is point. it gonna have a French name. <laughs> no, it's I. You know, it maybe would have. Yeah, it would have if you hadn't just uh, reminded uh, yeah. me not to do that because apparently that's like a right. That's a really bad. Uh, no, knee it's not jerk bad. That it's I just, have. Yeah. Well, magazine. Uh, one component of your budding empire, you have a popping chat, and we mentioned this where you kind of yeah. mine it for these like data driven insights. As a maybe. Uh, tertiary revenue stream, do you ever sell these reports to boneheaded corpo execs that are desperate to know what the kids are into? No, I just publish so them for much, free. I know, yeah. dude, you're so Crazy. stupid. But there's so, much value, there's so much value in these. Yeah. Yeah, I should, I was thinking about getting a sponsor for it, like an analytics company that can kind of help me maybe mm. just do some of the work because like those take a lot of time. How do you do that? You just like it's, control so, F brand? Like, Oh no, <laughs> it's like way more than that. I have I have a news editor that I've been working with for over a year, shout out M. And they like, they and I together will pull, like look through everything manually. Like like wow. they'll go into the chat, they'll, they'll count out like every brand mention. And then I go into like our uh, newsletter sends and all you know, like write every brand mentioned in there. And then there's I go to the way, analytics. There's gotta be way AI can do this. Yeah. yeah. I know we tried with AI too, but it's just like, it just was so inconsistent and it like didn't include totem in one of them. And I was Ugh. like, no, that's major. Like right. it's obviously red a big flag. thing. Yeah. Red flag. So you're you fine tooth combing it yourself. Yeah. Well, you and M. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Damn, definitely want to get, I know, Jesus I know. Christ. I feel like we're, I'm, th they've sent me like a few like AI. They're like, can we please do this next time? I'm like, I will look into it. I don't know anything about AI. Right. I don't want to make a mistake. But you really here, don't think that, th that that's like a, a, a commodity you're creating, like from it, your, from yeah. your robust community that you could monetize. I could, I could, yeah, I, th I think I should get a sponsor on it, but I don't want to like gatekeep that information from the reader. I feel like I do it all for the reader ultimately. So mm. it's like, you know, I want to keep that information. That's big of you, honestly. I mean, the, who they're, you know what I mean? Like I don't need sponsors to like keep doing the newsletter. Right. Like I can, sustain it on affiliate dollars alone and I can sustain that not even making everything exclusively affiliate like I would say like it's like a 60 40 split oh, of like what's affiliate and what's not have you had sponsors approach you be like hey we want you to like write about our thing yeah I'm starting to do more partnerships now mm. just because I have an agent um, nice. and I think it's just like everyone's like what's going on with newsletters? Should we get in there? And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. Open for you know? business. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's like, you know, I don't charge for the newsletter, like in terms of subscriptions right, right now, but like, okay, one, one note I will say, it's like, I think I'm going to have to start doing like one paid send just because Substack yeah. supports its paid newsletters so much more internally. And I'm like, Hey, if you guys want to, 
You're like, hey, gotta I'm get over that here. fee somewhere. Yeah, I'm kind of just like, look, if you make a little money off of me here, then maybe you can like right. share me to your other readers. Like they just like have so many people that yeah. I'm like, I don't want to miss out on that. Those vampires need their ten percent. I know, I know. They really are like you know, shaking us all down. Yeah. In terms of those brand partnerships you're talking about, James and I were marveling at the tastefulness of your like Adidas SponCon that you did oh, with yeah. Spezial. So is that like? Is that like that's a brand working with Laura Riley, the person right. versus Magazon? Right. How does like how, how do you like uh how do we separate church and state there? What's the line of demarcation? Um, I mean, okay, so I've done a few like paid sponsorships for the newsletter, like a really a handful, maybe like four total ever and like um i do instagram like whatever like i don't care that is just like a billboard for whoever wants it because i don't care about my instagram at all damn we um, could learn a lot from that i could learn a lot from that i mean you really don't give a shit i don't give a shit at all and it doesn't really Maybe like, that's why it's pretty good I mean, I do, you do have to do like the filler posts sometimes of like, here's a beautiful flower and here's the coffee yeah, and here's the, the book dunk. and the quote. Yeah, here's exactly. Some chairs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because right now I think my page is literally just like, pick of me, pick of me, pick of me. And I'm like, this is so, because I have like family members that follow me and I'm just like, I'm just the family narcissist right now, mm. you know? So I'm just like, this book is for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Be proud of me, yeah. mom and dad. <laughs> But um, yeah, I don't know. In terms of like the the partnerships, I think it's like there is more real estate on the newsletter to like do cool things with mm -hmm. brands. So like there is still like this educational period right now of just like, here's what we can do here, which is way more interesting than just like popping off like a photo on right, like a right. story Where are or these whatever. sneakers cool? Yeah, but like brands Lee. are still just like this. We know Instagram, it right. works for us. So they, yeah. you know, they, sometimes they would just rather just stay with Instagram. And I also just like, I'm not going to do like every brand who approaches me for the of newsletter. Cause I'm like, that actually means something sure. in here. Like I'm not trying to like well, pour out my readers. But so IG easily. fucking uh, red, red light district. Oh my Let's God. go. Yeah. That <laughs> trash fire is not my problem anymore. Even if like the, the, the spawn con is more happening on IG. Like, do you find though that, ha and maybe this isn't the case, but do readers ever like kind of maybe question the authenticity of your recommendations? Because maybe there is a, a little lingering like, Oh wait, is this spawn con? Because they see, that happening elsewhere and or are we just in a post fucking spawn con world where it's like everything is potentially sponsored who cares it's pretty clear when something's sponsored versus when something is just like yo she loves this and she's putting us on i think it kind of comes back to this like affiliate kind of question like a lot of readers not that th th we were talking about earlier like some readers not really understanding how like affiliate stuff works too there is like a bit of like a big mishmash of like what like how individuals with platforms are engaging with brands and like yeah. how it does get really confusing. Um, I think like I have, I have like looked myself up on Reddit. Oh and, no. Like, How'd that Wait, go? Yeah. I know it wasn't so salacious, but um, there was like one comment that I really, you know, I, you take it personally. Cause like of Reddit course. is like so anonymous. Um, but they were like, they had said like, well, I used to really like magazine, but now <gasps> she like, you know, she oh, just posts no. all the free stuff she gets. Oh, so she's like a little off. out of touch. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, oh. oh, you're the Larry. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I feel so early in my Fuck career you. now to have like sold out yeah. in like this in the eyes of. of oh, you'll know audiences. when it happens. I promise <laughs> you. Oh my God. It feels delicious. Oh, wow. What's but that God. like to live deliciously? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Well, okay. I'm sorry that people are talking shit. I hope they don't like affect your actions to, you know, the, you don't swing the pendulum too far back in the other direction. But on a positive note, has the chat, the popping chat that we mentioned, have they put you onto like some sick finds and gems that you were just like, yo. Oh yeah, my this God, is totally. It's a resource. W. Yeah, 100%. W, w. Yeah, no, definitely. I feel like um, there's also men just a lot in the chat too. I feel like there's like, Trying I'd say. Trying to pull? <laughs> yeah, I mean like, come on, come on, hang out with us. We're really friendly in here. Yeah, I um, don't have a copy of American Psycho on my coffee table. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I'll look in the other newsletter chat sometimes just because I'm subscribed to them, I support them mm -hmm. and everything. But like, I don't see men commenting in them. So I'm like, we've got the men for some reason. Nice. So like, come hang out Build here. it and they will come. Yeah. We should and do like, some sort of uh, magazine chat uh, throwing fits discord crossover. Oh, like everyone will be standing on the other side of the exactly. like, middle school, middle school dance thing. vibes. Yeah. yeah. That would be cute. <laughs> a little mixer. A little mixer. Yeah. <laughs> no, they would probably get along. I, I wonder if there so. is, I wonder what the crossover is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you guys, well, it's going to be, is, like, there's tell us, be more. tell us if you're a subscriber already. Yeah, is that a thing in. I can ask yeah. them? Wait, so, so have, so you've like discovered brands through the chat or like, 
Yeah. And I, I feel like you're going to ask me who, and I'm like, I have screenshots of them, but I don't have good like ones on call, but I've like discovered like a really good gloves brand, mm. um, like leather, nice leather gloves, like some of the socks and underwear that I'm like doing research for right now. Like people shouted out good ones. Um, menswear ones were really, cause I feel like I'm not like fully across every brand in the menswear space. Um, uh, men are really liking, um, the like Scandi brands right now. Oh, yeah. Well, you, didn't yeah. Our, you didn't mention you're our, welcome. You didn't mention our legacy, which is. Like I know. A well, bit I thought concerning. it was too obvious. Oh, oh, oh damn. Oh, well, never mind. Really? I, I was going to, but I was like, maybe it's maybe that would be That's like a shot a, to the heart. No, I, I love our legacy. I think that's great. my legacy. <laughs> yeah, is my we love the, with our legacy. We do love the Scandi brands. I yeah. think that they're hitting a sweet spot right now. And they always that, have been for the last like right, fifteen right. years because they're, they're totally. doing them. They're and obviously such a tasteful people. Totally, yeah. And they have speaking. their they have their like environmental bent to them too, which we love. Right, well, it's, form, it's form and function. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like I'm like, dude, can I even say that? Like speaking from a well, there's like her perspective. But. There's like four man function to the fucking living in the most barren place in the world. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. Um, so the chat, I think that like when people talk about community, usually it's in a bullshit way, but I really think that like, whether it's our discord or your chat, that is what the true meaning of it is. Lifeblood. And then you have like the larger institutions like, oh yeah, our community on Instagram, it's like, oh yeah, your million followers, 65% of which are bots. <laughs> right. The people being like, hey, I didn't get my order. Yeah. <laughs> my community. Bro. Bro, first of all, what's up with the New Yorker app? Why is everything out of order? But <laughs> seriously, talk of the town air, is at the end. What the fuck? Air more grievances, bro. Yeah. It's I your know, platform. What do you think, and, and as someone that has worked in like large mainstream media, lifestyle media, what do you think are the most obvious mistakes? Let's just keep it obvious that lifestyle and fashion media make when it comes to trying to connect with an audience in 2024. Um, I think it's just still speaking from like brand voice, you know what I mean? Mm. Like you see like some mainstream media correcting course on that. Like New York mag has, um, Oh my God, I'm forgetting her name right now, but she does the starter packs of New York. She, Sasha. Sasha. Yeah. She's running their, their, their socials. Their socials yeah. And it's like, she's speaking as like a human being, right. you know, with, she's just her mm-hmm. for New York mag. And but it's, it's not like, it's not like it, a you know? few years ago when Doritos was like, <laughs> What's good, kids? Like, oh yeah, that yeah, or like everyone brand saying that they're gonna kill themselves yeah, exactly. Twitter or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, don't do it, Burger King. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't oh. know who's in line for the throne. Don't oh do it, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was awful times to be online. Yeah, uh, that was like silence brand. Yeah. Oh my yeah, god, that was shit. just so. I was like, I can't believe this is working for them. Or but brands beefing yeah. with each other and shit, like yeah. dunking on each other on Twitter. It's like, shut the fuck. up. I know. Man. Oh my god. But yeah, I mean, I think just like I don't know, being like more like person like Real. being a person i don't know like yeah. even just literally being a person you know <laughs> like not like i'm a corporation with rights of mm-hmm. a human being which is like how brands sound when they're like posting online yeah. but by know? the way corporations are people too yeah <laughs> let's be clear this is conde nast <laughs> we like these the soft squishy body of conde nast yeah. Yeah. yeah these go from the boardroom to the bar <laughs> <laughs> do you ever see these people ripping off your strategy and tactics at all i do oh. I do, but the thing is, like, they're less consistent about it. So, like, I may be trying to rip off everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's like I just have kept doing it, and that's why I'm like, it's working. Do you right. know what I mean? It's like I was doing it early on, and I just kept doing it, and now it's working. Right, but yeah. like, a lot of people are like, "Well, I'm going to do it," but then they're not really, you know. It's kind of like they're not about that life. Yeah, they're really not about that life, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait them all out. Basically, yeah. wow, yeah. a war yeah. of attrition. I'll outlast yeah. you, like Putin. You exactly. I don't have ghouls. any. I don't have any anything else to do. I made this great job. So I'm just like, I'm going to publish. Same I'm thing just at again. home chilling. Yeah. I could do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> fully, fully. They're yeah. going to eventually pivot to video <laughs> yeah. and lay everyone off again. Exactly. And you'll still be there just fucking Lincoln. Mm. I, I mean, I literally She's like a cockroach <laughs> Lincoln and building. <laughs> Yeah, like when I move, when I do these updates to the newsletter, I move so slow with mm. them. Like, and I think about them for, I agonize over them for so long. So it's like, it's going to take me so much to do something different just because I'm like, oh, I'm so busy. I can't <laughs> do anything new. And it's like me being busy is like, I got to go to a press appointment and right. then I got to go to the drinks thing that like everyone, that, you know, then spawns this hate read about media parties. Mm. But I'm like, but I got to be there. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's me being busy. And like when I'm not working on the newsletter. Yeah. So. That's the rest of my days just mapped out <laughs> That's right a day now. in the life. Yeah. Is, your, is your readership like slowly inching up or do you get like big spikes when there's like a, a, a mention or like a, or like you do a fucking banger of a send that gets shared a million times? Like how does, how do you kind of 
maintain it's, audience it's, growth. It's pretty slow and steady. I would say like mm. there have been like little spikes like along the, the way. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I'd say like one of my first nice little spikes was like being on perfectly imperfect. Okay. Oh, that was cool. Tyler. Yeah. You ready um, for a big spike? Yeah. I'm like, yo, just come, oh, come, sh- come spike me over here. You know, let's go. <laughs> You're about to get Gronk spike. That's <laughs> a sports <laughs> reference for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Football. I'm going to get all the, I'm going to get all the male signups, all the menswear signups. So when you, you hit are. like your little press junket, that's when you see these, these spikies. I don't really, I mean, like I, I do like, I get quoted as a source on a right. lot of things. I don't really see any, it doesn't move the needle for me. Mm. Um, but well, it's are you getting link for, backs? Because that is our biggest thing. If you quote I know. anybody from, and this is the thing where it's like, you were talking about where you're like, are you sure you want to quote me? I'm the competition or whatever. A lot of times those motherfuckers don't link back to the fucking Totally. Products. I mean, like there's like Vogue business and like business of fashion. Both of them have like pretty hey. strict policies hey. of like no linking. And I like, I will speak to them. She but built I'm an like, empire off linking. Uh, yeah, you got to link. Building. Yeah, linking and building. For I wonder sure. if we were for, because we just talked to Vogue business about jeans. We I wonder if they fucking linked throwing fits. We weren't. And mm. you know what? They, Interesting. They re- I have to like, I really, every time at the, I'm at the end of the call, sometimes I don't even take the call because I'm just like, are you going to link? And they're like, we're going to try. <laughs> we're going to do our we best. We should but start it, saying that. It know, gets edited out a lot. Recently, uh, or not recently, yeah, last night, there's a GQ article that went up about like the homie lookbook. And I was on the cover image with a bunch of other people. And it was like, I'm not a model, but I'm still in a lookbook. What? And I'm like, damn, did GQ just call me ugly? And they talk about, they mentioned us a few I times. I read it. We were no not links. Not linked. Oh nope. my god! No links. And, I, and we're not blaming Jason Diamond. No, he's a diamond oh. in the rough. No, literally, we are blaming <laughs> your editor, <laughs> the institution. <laughs> are you scared? What about like? So we are seeing whether they're ripping off your strategy and tactics inconsistently. We are seeing the newsletter newsletterification of larger media companies. Are you worried at all that they might eat your lunch? I was. I was definitely worried about it when I started actually. Cause I was like, the premise is very straightforward. It's just like, here's the news. You know what I mean? Like that's all I was doing for the first year of magazine. It was just like, these are the news and sales. It's just in this like very clicky kind of like yeah. bullet point format, which yeah. people, people like bullet points, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, there's nothing stopping a newsletter or sorry, like a publication from just copy pasting that. Cause right. it's like, you know, there was like buzz. I think like, especially like the media people are looking for like what the buzz is going on in the media space. Like, you know, as newsletters are coming up. So I was very nervous about it. And I got an offer to buy the newsletter. <gasps> wow. Within How- year one? Yeah, within year one, Damn. it was a it was a bad offer. Okay, so they tempted. usually are. Yeah. It was. I was the thing is, I was tempted in a way because it came with a job mm. oh. in house, and I was like, they wanted to buy your IP. Yeah, they wanted to, they wanted me to continue running the newsletter just under their, um, you know, under their publication under their umbrella, and like go in as like an e commerce editor role. Mm. Um, and so tempted. I was tempted, yeah, because there was the salary, but I was just like, I don't know. And it was like more than I was making in my previous in-house job. And I was like, this this is a project. I don't know if this is going anywhere. But I ultimately was like, I'm going to invest in myself. Yeah, you know? not like, yourself. Fuck I yeah. believe in this. Um, but it right. was, yeah, but I was like, I, you know, I I think I'm like, I don't know, like going on off on a tangent right now. I can't even remember the year. Oh, yeah. The like, uh, if... Uh, Brands are if brands, applications are yeah. like brands. Brands, I think, have done it more, but like big, big, like like the big uh, magazine titles, or yeah. or you know, like there's just some article the other day that like the the New York Times newsletter is like bigger than the paper itself. Oh yeah, now. I know, I read that. That was great, actually. I thought that was amazing because like that Substack's impact is just like changing the voice mm. in the New York Times newsletter to like match newsletter tone more, and then it's like trickling into the Times. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's fashion Substack's influence. Right. I'm far from saying that, but it's like it is crazy to see that uh, like a behemoth like the Times is going to bend to the voice of like the newsletter way they that's turned happening the cruise right ship, now. To use yeah. a phrase that James loves. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're turning a fucking tanker, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. And running it well. right to a bridge. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that bridge in Baltimore. I mean, I think that like like podcasting, like everyone, it's like, oh, it's this revolutionary new fucking medium. I mean, they were saying that a long time ago. It's like, no, bro, it's radio. This shit's right. been around for 150 years. Yeah. Right. Newsletters, it's like, Oh, it's a brand new thing. It's like, eh, you had like, uh, you know, op-ed authors or like columnists right. that, you yeah. know, were like nationally syndicated before like, media went down the fucking toilet like right. 50 years ago. Right. And um, it's not even the first newsletter wave, you know, it's like yeah. there was, pre- there's, pre- there's been pre, I worked at Thrillist previously and wow. that started as a newsletter. Right. Wow. And yeah. like, I don't know, 2005 Haven't heard that something. name in years. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't think that like a large media title is going to 
try to put their resources behind a newsletter and come for your crown? I mean, they absolutely could is the thing. I, the thing but, is like, it just is, I just don't think it's worked yet. I mean, I think they are, but it just hasn't happened because like, I, I think like the leg up I have is I get to be Laura in mm, my newsletter. Right. Like yeah. they have to be Vogue. whatever. Yeah, exactly. And whatever. like, that's a little, who cares? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Not like, me. Like, I think that like, I, I think, yeah, I think Nothing. people know that I'm like Spam. able to say <laughs> what I want to say. Yeah. And like, I'm not really, you know, I think, like a Vogue say, it's like, we all know how mm. they work in relationship to their advertisers. It's mm. like the pot is so, the well is so spoiled or whatever yeah. they say. Sorry, my metaphors are all no, off today. No, no, no. The dicks are getting sucked. <laughs> the backs are being scratched. In the words of a previous guest, I'm not, no, I don't know if you're familiar with Benny the Butcher. He's a rapper from Buffalo, but oh. his whole thing is he said, I can say what I want to say because I really fucking did that shit. And that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. There you go. To like paraphrase Jonah Hill and Superbad, the backs, <laughs> the backs are getting scratched. The, the thing about his, my penis is that it's on my back. Um, <laughs> no, the Laura, thing about my back is that it's on my balls. Yes, there it is. <laughs> what is your personal media diet outside of, outside of shopping, outside of, outside of like doing research for your own thing? Ooh, um, let's see. I mean, I, I do like some of the other newsletters for sure. I like to support my contemporaries who okay. I feel like are implied. Um, I get a lot of newsletters in my inbox. Let's say that. Okay. Right. You support yeah. with the subscription. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll like. I ain't reading that shit though. <laughs> you don't, you don't, don't open and then immediately delete? Like just to no, help the open delete, rate? No, I don't delete. I don't delete. Okay. I just mark it. It's just red there. You know what I mean? But, but, you that, but that helps their open rate now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're supporting. Oh, damn. Yeah, 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 I'll you this. All yeah. right. Easy. Just open. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then just just leave it aside, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I got to remember with certain people not to do that then. Yeah. <laughs> You're like going to say stay Fuck subscribed you. but then not open them yeah. just to it's hurt like, the It's open like rate. muting somebody on any social I media I kind of wish you could mute on uh, newsletters. You just mark as spam, no? Yeah. I guess so. I never thought about that. Oh. That feels too... To yeah, icky. I don't know. Because yeah. a lot of you motherfuckers are going to mark that spam starting <laughs> now. Mark his promotion? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't have promotions in that in that oh, okay. email. I, I have my, you know, spam of course. email. Right, right, right. Where I get it all the... I sign up for like literally every brand's newsletter for the news. So Is I'm that like, where you do a lot of the research? Like from brand newsletters from brand? Like do you yeah. have to follow a shitload of brands on socials? Um, and no. how bad is that? <laughs> no, I don't really. I just follow who I want to follow organically okay. and like just oh, get news like fall that. Fall fits? <laughs> uh, do I? I don't know. Uh, wow. Oh, damn. Well, we can get all, we I, can get all our followings I, I in a row. I do follow. Okay. Yes. You better start if you want to tap into the menswear game. Right. Heavy. I know. Wait, I have one question while we're on the topic of brand newsletters. What brand has the best newsletter? Yeah. Um, I love... Just from a copy perspective, Reformations, mm. I know that they're like very, the basic pitch brand. And they're also kind of like the sunscreen marketing story of women's wear. I don't know if that sentence what, means anything that, yeah, to it, you. Can, you. can you tell us what that means? Uh, like vacation sunscreen, like they launched like, I don't oh. know, a few years ago. Do you know them? They yeah. do like, yeah, they kind of have like a 70s, 80s -y kind of yeah. retro nostalgic vibe to I've them. I've used it before. It smells good. Yeah. They're kind of like, they're, everyone really likes to talk about the marketing story and like the, you know, the, the brand design and how like, how interesting it is from like a brand perspective. And I'm like, I don't know anyone who uses this sunscreen that hasn't been sent to me. Right, 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 right. And so it's like, people like to talk about like the copy of Reformation because it, but it, the thing is like, it is just more, it's just more clever to me than like okay. every other. And the thing is like just subscribing to so many brand newsletters, I see their impact on everyone else's copy that's in there. Mm -hmm. They're um, leading the pack. Even if the clothing or the brand is basic, like yeah. you said, they're but leading. But it's still shoppable. It's still fun. It still the, passes. Right, but they're yeah. the tip of the spear when it comes to just like that personality and that copy. Yeah, or it's like yeah. the, you know, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man or well-dressed woman is, is queen. Right, okay. There we go. Right? Well-spoken. Yeah. yeah. I would also say um, Baba, the knitwear brand, their Spanish knitwear brand, mm. they put out like they, they just do like a great newsletter every once in a while. So rarely, mm. but it's like super informative. They did one about just like where all of their yarns come from and like mm. the family that they work with that's making them and they're dying, you Piana know, facilities. Nah. Laura Piana should do one, but do you? Okay. <laughs> that's actually, why I said it. Cause they're evil. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen their Instagram lately? No, no. they're, I mean, are they the, trying to like the, do the, a thing? The visuals are like probably as exactly the same as they always have been, but I started reading their captions oh, and no. whoever's doing their captions right now is like so cringe. Mm. I I kind of like can't get over it. It's like the ethereality of the lightweight Ooh. silk for your, yeah. Um, yeah, like I think it's like even worth a read. Sounds like, like Alexander Arnaud got a new gig. It's, it's <laughs> oh my God. Uh, okay. Uh, liked by Laura Riley. First oh, of all. Gotta oh, like, gotta oh, like. Oh, I was like seen. Incredible detailing and savoir faire. <laughs> French. 
so for an extraordinary look. Sorry, Immerse yourself in sophisticated creations, fully realized in vibrant white cotton and silk crochet. Silence brand! The result oh is a delicate God. silhouette exuding timeless elegance. Oh just, my exuding just, timeless elegance? Shut it's just fuck buzzword, up. buzzword it's so, salad. It's, yeah, it is. It truly is. It's, it's AI. That's it gotta be AI. AI. Right? Yeah. It's gotta be AI. <laughs> French oh AI. <laughs> it's like, it's just like, so. I was like, babes, AI? you can AI? afford <laughs> someone. Uh, Oh my really God, that's painful, dude. This um, is, yeah. Well, we talked about your personal media mm -hmm. diet. What we'd love to know is, have you ever, what's the personal phase, the personal style phase you went through that now you look back on and cringe the hardest? We've all had them. Um, I was like really into like a vapor wavy kind <laughs> of like early internet-y kind of like, yeah. it was very, uh, you know, terminally online is such an overused phrase, yeah. but like that kind of thing. I did my like um, senior thesis on Vaporwave as a movement. Wow, really? And like, and like health, health goth. Um, <laughs> and I was just very like into just like being like, I'm so like clued in. I'm so post just, I yeah. don't know, everything kind of thing. And it Fire. was like, I don't know. Like, if you did a senior thesis today on a trend, by the time you handed your thesis in, that trend would have been eight trends ago, totally, which is wild. Totally. Yeah, I know. I think like that era. I mean, like I think right. about it like fondly in sure. a way because it was like it's, I think it was like the last of these like real cores. The that Tumblr existed. era cores. Yeah, exactly. Um, Normcore came after. I think. I think Normcore might be the the last batch. That might have been the last one. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Or cottage core, I guess. Yeah. But even that felt like that doesn't feel real though. No. I mean, they're making their butter, they're turning their their milk or whatever, but it's they're not real. Their prairie frill yeah. dresses or whatever. Yeah. Well, speaking of trends, uh, and for the fellas at home, yeah. Mm. What are some style trends? Just personally speaking, what are some style trends you would love to see guys lean into more in 2024, especially as the seasons are turning? Mm. Mm. Um, that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I'm gonna be such a broken record here, but like a Lemaire, like a nice, like uh, a wide pant. Yeah, like a wide pant. Like a maybe, like it's a little more like utopian dressing oh, in a way. It's interesting. like uh, you're you're kind of like in this you know, the a little dystopian culty, dressing we've seen. Yeah. Uh, like a what? Versus a dystopian, the dystopian yeah. dressing we've seen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seen? Maybe like have a little levity mm, in there. Okay. You know, a little right. more. The trousers, like my glasses, half full. <laughs> Just a little like opulent elegance every now oh, and again. Mm, you know? Okay, fancy What's, boy shit. Yeah. I mean, just but like relax, comfy, you know. Relax, but just a, a, little, a little French Riviera. A little French, yeah, sure, yeah. It has to be French. A little Cote d'Azur. Yeah, okay. Be French. What about trends that are like absolutely cooked, or kind of like, or even worse, stand out as like sartorial red flags to your eye for the boys, mm. for the fellas. Like somebody pulls up wearing something and you meet her like, that's a fucking dude that, you know, the girl has got to avoid. Um, Cover your drink. Yeah. Maybe you don't feel strongly. I but. don't know. Yeah. I think it's kind of like a, I know it when I see it, like pornography well, kind of thing, yeah, you know? For um sure. <laughs> God, I don't know. Besides Jeffrey Epstein core. <laughs> no, I thought we liked that. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. Still um, cover your drink though. Yeah, definitely cover your drink for sure. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Um, Phone a friend. I don't, know. I don't know if I have a great one. That's for fine. This. I don't know. You can move you can, on. I don't know. Well, I think if that, that's not interesting, you can edit now that, that we've out. germinated. <laughs> now that we've germinated this into your brain, I think you're gonna go. You're gonna be out here and you're gonna be like, oh fuck, I maybe hate that guy. Maybe I'll like maybe like send you like a voice note and you can like yeah, we'll patch yeah. it into this. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> from from the front lines when you do your green point afternoon, you might see a bunch of red flags. Exactly. Exactly. Here I'm in the. All right, speaking of the serviceable aspect of your newsletter, we would love to offer up a bit of service um, for the fellas listening at home. What is a good fit for a guy heading out on a first date if they're able to get the number of a cool New York girly and actually schedule time with her to sit down and learn about each other? What should he be wearing? I okay. I mean, it's it's kind of cheesy, but like my when I went on the first date with my husband, he was he showed up and I was like, oh, this guy's hot. Oh, Shit. let's hear it. He was he was literally he was wearing like just a leather jacket, jeans, white tee, like the ultimate all time, just super classic, almost like an elegant timeless classic. Just yeah, yeah. It's Am like, I it about was, to marry James Dean? <laughs> like it was, it was almost like too on the nose. Oh, you know what I mean? But it was hot. It, but it was. I was. I was like, oh god, I'm like, I'm corny that I'm into it. You know what I mean? <laughs> what does it say about me? Yeah. yeah, but it was like, it was just, you know what I mean? Like it worked is the thing. So yeah. I don't know if that's like take. Do do with do with that what you will. Yeah. Okay. But that worked and we're married now. So <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. like the fit was right, the proportions were right. Yeah. Everything was everything like clocked in as on a cohesive level too. Yeah. Not yeah. just the individual it, like 
Because you yeah, could, yeah, you could wear like, those exact pieces and look like fucking shit. Right. I mean, I think it just like worked for him and his like. I mean, I think it worked for his body type. Like he was, okay. he, was mm. he was really skinny at the time, so it just sort of like hung whoa, off whoa, whoa, in this like at the time. Slain. Yeah, he got like buff. Oh, he's been on his like gym journey, and so he's just yeah. like huge. Shout out all like, the buff. newly jacked husbands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good for them. <laughs> <laughs> So dress um, for your body type, which yeah. is the thing dress that we preach a lot. You sure, every guy, sure. you got to have a tailor, dude. Right. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Got to have a therapist, a barber who could also double as a therapist if you want to. Yep. Two birds, one stone. It. Yeah. Your dentist also, your surgeon. Mm, you don't need How a dentist you- or surgeon. You don't need a dentist? A surgeon. Not if you're on podcast health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like a prey that they stay in your head kind of thing. Yeah, just floss. That's why the first yeah. date is so important because you need to marry a woman with health insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Take Mar- it from me. While you still marry have your corporate, teeth. Yeah. Marry a corporate girly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's say the guy nails the first date fit, right? Whether it's kind of like dressing for his body type or dressing exactly like in the fit you mentioned. Just, now just that exactly in that Now bit. that they're booed up. Mm. What are some items that you think are like fail safes when it comes to gifting your better half? Mm. Yeah. Oh, but only in the fashion space. No. Well, Any, uh, preferably, mm. but like jewelry, home goods, um, self care shit. I think like just like little tokens are the best way to do. It. I'm thinking about like, like, like all tokens, like a- yeah, like thoughtful tchotchkes kind okay. of thing. Like, okay, like gifts Ugh, that I've given Fuck. given my partner are like a mushroom foraging knife. That was a really oh, good one. Sick. It has like a little brush at the end of it, so you can mm. kind of inspect your discovery. Yeah, I've seen Phantom Thread. <laughs> Is that in that? <laughs> well, they, you, yeah, poisonous mushrooms. Oh, but yeah. um, okay, okay. And in uh, the Nicolas Cage movie Pig, mm-hmm. oh. where he tries to find his truffle pig. Yeah. Oh, wow. I have so much, I have to add to my media diet after yeah. today. So many things on my list. Mm. Another thing that so I got. So it's like thoughtful, but useful, but <laughs> yeah, like also yeah. that one's aesthetically a more nice. Like, yeah, that one's like a little more romantic. A truffle knife. Um, Damn, that's fire. And then uh, the other thing that I got him was like um, an under the sink composter. <laughs> also very fire. Wait, wait, wait. To, be, to be clear, we're asking what guys should get girls. So if, oh, if we oh, got, see, so if a guy buys well, a girl uh, <laughs> an under the sink <laughs> composter, is that going to hit? Maybe. I mean, Maybe. I don't Damn. know. I think a lot of girls would really appreciate that. Yeah, actually. maybe she has a lot of coffee grounds and eggshells. She got to get rid of that. You can do way more than that, even. You can That's do so like you yeah. can do chicken bone and everything. Yeah. Cabbage cores. Um That's little, the real core. <laughs> little gifts though. Yeah. Um I think like a little okay, like romantic gift though, we're thinking. Like win her heart over. It's like her you're dating and it's her birthday. Mm. But you're s- five months in. Yeah. Ooh, five months is such a tough one because it's know, like you're right? not going to get That's like expensive jewelry. That's why we're jewelry. asking the expert. Shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, Don't fucking like a blow David it. David Buster's I'm... gift card, like <laughs> power card. Yeah, yeah Yo, like maybe babe, like there's fifty mixed bucks in. on here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, if you win enough points, you can get a ring at the <laughs> David Buster store. Yeah. We'll hit the gift shop. With it those dropped ticks. A, it dropped a collab with Jared. Yeah, <laughs> this is us buying you time. It's by the Dave way. Buster. I know, I'm like literally, but it's I'm like Dave so Buster engaged. and Jared. <laughs> Woo! Maybe I'm gonna bust is later. It, yeah. So what is it? Is it like a yeah. like a maybe like a little? I do. I think it's just so hard because like it's like if someone were to buy me something fashion wise, I would be like, no, like oh. don't so get me something fashion. That's wise. absolutely something that we go through where it's like when someone's trying to buy, it's like don't do clothes. Yeah, like don't. I'm like I have that covered. Yes. You know what I mean? That's like, the perf- advice. Is don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fully don't do that. Like, get something that, like, you share together that's, like, or something mm. that you're interested oh. in that they have expressed some interest mm. in as well. Like, be like, this is a thing from me. Maybe you know a what shared I mean? experience. Like, one of those shared uh, experience is great. Like, trapeze, a uh, Chelsea Pier, a couple's massage. An escape yeah. room where you end up just yelling at each other. <laughs> uh, I got us a reservation at the axe throwing bar. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Experiences, I don't babe. know. Do like a little trip or something. Go upstate. Oh, you know? oh that's cute. Yeah. yeah. I feel like five months is great for that. If yeah. Not really make a break. Just you know? kind of make yeah. a break. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You do your little, like, uh, you get out of town. Your you gift know? is an audition. Yeah. Oh, my oh, for God. Both of, no, for both of us. <laughs> Yeah, you know that's it. They're gonna you're gonna go upstate with this person, and they're gonna you're gonna share "I love yous." You know what yeah. I mean? Like you're gonna rent your cute little car. You're yep. gonna go in your beach. Make sure you, you, go, you uh, like, set up if you if if this is who you are. I'm not saying this is who I am, but you know maybe set up a safe word. So it's like oh time to poop. Here's my safe word. Like now you know you gotta make mm-hmm. yourself scarce. You're sharing a little room. <laughs> is this how you, at five months? Like a, I guess so. Yeah. Oh my god. It's important. I don't stuff. think we got to like the poop conversation like comfort level to like. Two weeks ago, or something. You oh. and your husband? Yeah, I'm oh, like, I don't. By the way, congratulations. Oh, yeah. thanks. We've been married for like over a year. Did now. you guys give each other years, a maybe? poop conversation gift? Uh, yeah, we. It was like kind of like a an emoji, sort of like I'm ready to talk about poop with you. I'm finally ready to be vulnerable with you. <laughs> Let's when it talk comes to this. shit. And then literally. we exchanged expensive jewelry because <laughs> yes. that was the nice. milestone yeah. marker. Uh, there. You got him some fartier. Nice. Um, <laughs> 
you do so much shopping for your newsletter, right? And you talk about how like fashion wise, like you're good, you're covered. Do you still though have a grail that you are hunting for? I have things that I would love to get, but I also would dread getting them is the thing. Why? Why? It's like, cause they're, cause then, cause then you don't have to like lust for them anymore. I feel like Mm. since like being in this role, like having this job, creating this job for myself, like you get a lot more stuff that you always wanted, you know, okay. which is amazing. Yeah. And then you kind of realize like the luster of it. It's like, I don't know. You just, it's, it's the, the fire within you to create the content around it, like needs mm. to exist a little bit when it's out of reach. So all that glitters is not gold, Laura. I mean, nice. it's, it's great. It's like a huge privilege. Like of I don't want to sound ungrateful. Like I love all the stuff that I have. Like it's cool and it's mm-hmm. fun. And it's like, I like to wear it and play in it. What's, your, num- what's your most worn garment? I have a few pairs of these Escada pants that I get on pants eBay. Yeah, they're just a great, like you can get them for like 60 bucks on eBay. They're just like an Escada pleated pant and like they have a little, I don't know. Like they make a, them oh, the, an extendo waistband? Extend, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like nice. the buttons over to the side yeah. and it's just pleated like they're- Pleated trousers. Who doesn't love a pair of pleated pants? I think we're all like, wearing pleated trousers. They're so. amazing, you know? Ye, so mine are the, not pleated. Uh, are they? They are, they are. Slight they are. pleat, yeah. Oh my God, I was potting with a flat front loser. But you could, you know what I mean? Like I have like, I don't know. I have like six pairs of them and I like will rotate through them and you can get them in like any size and mm. they look good. Um, but I don't know. I think it's kind of like those more just like regular rotation pieces yeah. that are my most worn. So worst. there's no pie in the sky grail, like a watch I wanna or a get, bag or something. I want to get Some like, bullshit? I want to get like CDG, like lumps and bumps stuff. Mm. I want to get like the Margella hand skirt. Mm. With the like three D whatever little you want, like met met level shit yeah yeah like yeah. I'm like I want to you know that's so history. cool to me <laughs> yeah exactly yeah bags don't really do it for me frankly anything yeah. from the row we've brought their name up so I mean I have frequently. I just I have my row stuff and I wear oh. it and I like it oh big um, fucking flex alert yeah you gotta have the row when you're writing about the row that I, much you I can't be such the a loafers you know. oh yeah <laughs> I did yeah and thoughts they're fantastic they're great that's the soft the loafers are Wait, indeed did you, soft did you learn about them from her. I'm confused. What's the connection here? I don't think I'm just, the one like uh, telling people the row yeah. exists. <laughs> well, I'm just confused why you're like, I bought row loafers. No, because I'm saying that's a thing that like we get a lot of stuff for free. But for right. me, that was like a thing that oh, I wanted. Yeah, yeah. And I spent my fucking If the row is listening, we would money. all accept free. Only the one of the twins the is listening, but I don't know which one it is. And to the other twin that's not listening, fuck you. No, it's Elizabeth. Okay. So is she the cooler one? Is there a cooler twin? She's not twin? a twin. No, she's Elizabeth is the Oh, sorry. Of the twins, who is the cooler twin? Um, I think it's Mary Kate. Which one married Sarkozy? Was married to Sarkozy? Oh, I think it was Mary Kate. Yeah. I don't know. Actually, French. I'm really bad French. at them. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, they're Sarkozy. they're based in Paris now, right. so they're basically like a. Are they there full time? Uh, I mean, the row is like moved from New York to Paris. They do they show right, in but Paris, I, but and the twins themselves. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. To me, they're like celebrities rather than it's so bad. I like still have them lumped in that category rather than speaking of people. moving to gay Paris when we were stalking your IG in preparation for this pod it seemed oh, like yeah. you were looking for a little sitch what's are you moving no I want to um so I, yeah I posted basically like on Instagram I if someone has any leads on like a studio one bedroom apartment yeah and a little tear. yeah yeah I would I kind of just want to spend more time there I'm trying oh. to like make the move in the next five years trying to build the network wow. a little more I'm also just like I really if you couldn't guess it, I kind of like Paris. Yeah. So oh, I'm we like, can tell. Uh-huh. I know. I'm like, really, I'm being so oui, embarrassing. Oui. Fuck. <laughs> you really like, you really put a mirror up to people I'm here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's called real journalism. Maybe you newsletter oh writers could learn a thing or two yeah. from us. You're like, we're not trying to like expose you, but here no. I am like a what Francophile. You, oh, no. I want to give you the opportunity to ask the audience. Right. Maybe the audience. there's a, when, um, newsletters, when your newsletters emerge from your little cave, <laughs> yeah. you're no longer just type, type, typing. Yeah. I have to interface with people. I know, I know. You'll see me in Paris. It's the only time I'll be out in public. But yeah, basically, I'm just, looking for, slowly... I want, I'm just looking for a place to like be there like a few times a year, like more more than I am now, because like I go like three times a year for fashion week. So I'm like, I want to okay. spend like maybe like once a month would be cool. And not you know? at, so busy and scheduled where it's just like I can take it in. And... Right. And I think it's just like, it's like, you know, you can, it's easier to shoot photos in Paris than it is in New York. It's easier to be in touch oh, with really? brands over there. It's like, really? there's just, yeah, it's just, it just looks good over there. I don't know. It's like, parlez-vous français? It's, uh, um, oh, okay. My, my high school French, you know, Mm, I speak Spanish though. So that kind of helps. Yeah. But, um, but eventually yeah, anyway, magazine so, will become magazine. No. Oh yeah. It's actually like hell being out there having to explain the newsletter. Well, that's why it's in the bio. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm like Laura right. Riley, and, why and then James just perjured click there. himself over email. I know. <laughs> well, I don't go to Lincoln Bio. You know, I'm not that type of journalist. Um, okay, so <laughs> eventually, though, the operation, the Empire, will be. You're going to be Napoleon and, and run your shit, run the Empire from yeah. Paris. It would be cool to do like the bi coastal, if you know. What oh, I mean. right, right, like, right, right. That's the yeah, that's yeah, the kind yeah. of vibe, you know. Right. Yeah. But um, it's still New York. Laura still New York Paris, now. and she's going gorilla. Huh? New York or nowhere. Before you went full time running your own ship, you did work in a few branded content type gigs, right? We talked about like the e-commerce and the affiliate link stuff. Mm -hmm. We were right. We've been there with you in the shit, in the fucking trenches. Shit can get ass real quick. (laughs) What's the absolute worst product you've ever had to write about as if you were a fan of it? Oh my God. Uh, I mean like literally anything on Amazon. (laughs) I mean, it was just, it was, it's so rough out there writing about just some product that you're kind of like, I think this is actually completely fake yeah. and it's like the number one product in its category on Amazon because we're just like right. you know filling its cup over and over Welcome again to Dupe City. Yeah. yeah I know exactly it's like what is this like baby body vitamin C on like Amazon it's like I had to cover that a thousand times <laughs> oh I will say though one of the products I covered when I was in house doing like e-com content was this hair dryer brush Revlon hair dryer brush on Amazon and huh. I just got a version of it from T3 this week and I've been using it and it's great. It's like, okay. actually, like, I'm like, damn, I called okay, my own shot. I see, it yeah, is good. <laughs> I'm like, I, ca- I kind of see what the girlies were talking about back then because I was just like, who's going to use this stupid tool? And now I'm like, I love it. I, it's amazing. Me. It's me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm have you guys the stupid tool. heard about this thing? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like game changer, actually real. I'm eating my words kind of now. Is it better than the Dyson one that all the girlies the like? Wrap, I don't know. They haven't sent me one, so oh, probably that right. one's better. Okay, but so. That shit's like what, five hundred dollars? Yeah, it's like it's like kind of crazy. But there's actually. dupes of that even. Like my yeah, wife yeah. bought. Oh, maybe she bought the Dyson one. Uh, right. I bought. Check it. the bank account. Yeah, I don't know. You're like, I don't there, know, but you're like, I don't want to call her out right now. Like, <laughs> there's dupes of all that. Yeah. Of every yeah, yeah, splice fully. on <laughs> fully, and they're like number one on Amazon in their yeah. category. Yeah. yeah, I just bought yeah. a few things on Amazon for the throwing fits office. Mm-hmm. Um, Laura, how much money do you make? Ooh, uh, my line for this because I feel like it's kind of gauche to say numbers is that I make more now than I ever did when I was in health. Fire. That's fucking that's, go, dude. Yeah. We're right there, right there That's with the you. answer yeah. we're looking yeah. for. Yeah. Besides yeah. clothes, all right, what do you, and, and home goods and fashion mm-hmm. stuff, what do you like to spend your hard-earned money on? Um... Ubers. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Can't take the train. I, I take the train, but it's like I live in Clinton Hill and it's like there's you've got to walk to take a train and it's always raining for some reason. And it's like it's you have to Clinton you Hill. get to the G and then you have to transfer. <laughs> it's always raining in Clinton Hill. <laughs> and then you have to like transfer a bunch. So I'm just like I yeah, we're I, too hard. <laughs> I'm taking a fucking Uber as much as I want to, and that's like my the business exp- permit. expense. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah, yeah, I have a new CPA this year, so I'm like, can oh. I write this Shout out? Shout out all the CPAs behind yeah. every good entrepreneur. Yeah. Fully, behind every good entrepreneur, there's a better CPA. Yes. But, but by the time this um, episode comes out, I hopefully will have filed my taxes because I have not yet. Oh, girl, you're running out of time. Yeah. It's like, it's, I think it comes out on tax date, doesn't it? Something like yes. that? Uh, no, after. Oh, it might. Oh, no, the, the 15th, 15th, 15th is tax day. Day, so I don't 15th know. is tax day, right? Yeah. Yeah, You're okay. thinking of Louis's inaugural magazine true. send. True, true. Which is yeah. the 17th, so sign up today, the 10th, mm-hmm. so that you're fully caught up. I think it's the 19th, actually. The 19th. Or whatever I told you it is. The Why don't you get your fucking ship in order? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my fuck? God. Uh, we'll let Louis tell you about okay, it. So Ubers, you're spending all your money in Ubers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and flying to Paris. Yeah. Three, and flying three to Paris. Times a year. Yeah, yeah. For How sure. About, like, Love doing that. Was that a huge risk? Because we don't really do a lot of self-funded travel unless like there's a brand partnership attached to it. But like, were you like, I got to go to Paris to to be on the ground and totally. like actually report and like see the shit? Yeah, fully, fully. It's definitely, I'm like, I'm investing in myself. I really hope it right. pays off kind of thing. And I still, sometimes like brands will like fly me to cover certain fashion weeks and that's great. But it's also, you don't have the freedom of movement as when you take yourself right. to a place. And right, like, right, right. I really like to be able to cover fashion week in the newsletter properly, you know? And like when I go to, like I went to London with Burberry this season, which was nice. awesome. But I also was there only to see Burberry. Right. I saw like, I think one other show and I'm like this, I would love to cover London Fashion Week in like a more real capacity. Next time you talk to Daniel, tell him that we're available. Yeah. How did boy oh, Danny yeah. Lee do? Yeah. I mean, he did better than he did in past seasons. Yeah. yeah. I mean, bar's pretty low. Not to fuck up your bag. Yeah. And maybe a future bag for us. Yeah. But you yeah. and Skepta looked great. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> when you he says hi. <laughs> thanks. Uh, when you do travel, does your jacked husband get to tag along? He doesn't really like to travel so much. So I don't know. Even like the Paris place, I'm like, hey, babe, I'm gonna get a, p- a place in Paris. <laughs> like you can come when I'm there Deuces. if you want to. He's like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, sure. <laughs> What's the gym situation like? <laughs> you know, gyms Literally, in Paris. Yeah. He did come meet me in Paris last time, though, nice. so that was Romance. nice. When you travel for work, are you, like, splurging a little bit on, like, I don't know, or are you, like, keeping it real frugal because you're like, yo, this is, like, work. This is business. No, I like to spend money. It's <laughs> fun. Uh, it is really fun. It's great. Money. I like to go. I mean, like, we'll go to my, my husband's a chef, so we'll do, like, he likes to do the Michelin circuit, oh. so we'll go get, like, some oh, nice oh. reservations. So he's yeah. the gourmand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, hence I'm, the truffle knife situation. That makes yeah. a lot of right, sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the co- Composter. And yeah, the composter like, yeah. It's all coming together. Yeah. Right, right. You know, there, there were signs. Mm. Last money question and penultimate question of the podcast, the only Ooh. podcast that matters. Has there been a large purchase you've made recently as a chronic shopper that you had buyer's remorse on? You really fucked up and regretted? Yeah, you know what? I bought that like Prada suede jacket and I spent like, I got like a bit of a site discount for it, like a credit and like spent a good amount of my own money on it. It was like a few grand. And I'm just like, why did I get, like, why did I get this? It's like, can't worry, Clinton Hill. It's always raining. Yeah. It's always <laughs> raining. I know. But it's like, I, I, th- I think that I got really like sucked into the whirlwind of like, I want to get this got big, moochie pilled. expensive mm. product piece and getting the site credit kind of just made me feel like I had to act on it. Mm. You know, like sometimes you're just like, That's how they, get you. they yeah. do get you. Did you return it? No. Cause I, it's not, I still have it. Cause I was like telling myself like, I love it. One no, day. no, I love it. Yeah. No, I this is my favorite so thing. Much. Trying to convince yourself. This is so me. But the cost per wear right now is not looking good. It's because really low. Maybe you need like I've a, worn it tw- two times, three, not maybe. Not great. Maybe you, gonna, need, maybe you need that five month mark, that five month mile mark. Yeah, maybe. You know? I think I just need someone to spill something on it. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like just please wait, ruin what? this. Humanize so it I can a little blame bit. Blame someone else instead of the woman in the mirror. I know. I mean, just so, someone to just be like, well, it's not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just a fucking jacket. Like, wear it. It's just you know? clothes, bro. It's just yeah, clothes. It yeah. Just but it's very, it, it's kind of like. Are you like scared to wear it or is it because it's so expensive? It just, I just don't think I like it that much. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Wait, did you try this on at any so, point? No, before? no, I didn't. No. You know, I know. It's crazy. Are and it's hit, pink. Why you, what? It's like a pink suede. Yeah. Why don't you hit the real world with it? Because I'm never going to get my money back right, for you're, it. She's you know? in too deep, dude. Yeah. And it's like current season or I guess maybe it's old now, but like, you know what I mean? It's like kind of, I don't know. I just really like, I think I've gotten better at like pretending like st- to not pretend like I'm a certain person when I'm buying something than who I actually am. Mm. Like I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to adopt a new personality with this new piece. Right. Like uh, I kind of know myself a little better than I did in my twenties. shopping. Yeah. I'm like, I think I kind of just like put a lot on this jacket being like, I could be this person. Yeah. There's a lot riding on this jacket. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, but why? Like literally, I'll like I don't want to be that person. I'll look great in Paris in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Or in I, Paris. Yeah. I know. I don't know. Hopefully Maybe. you find the occasion or the mindset because yeah. I don't know. It sounds a pink suede Prada jacket. Sounds fucking sick. I mean, it's cool. I think it's just too much of a look, you know? Yeah, but the jacket wears you versus you. Yeah, wearing the definitely. Jacket. I think I'm also just like sh- I don't. I'm five five, and I feel like I'm getting shorter. I don't know if that's real or not. <laughs> that's but like gravity. That's yeah, the, that's the I eclipse. mean, I'm in my thirties. I don't think it's supposed to happen so young. But Fair. like, it, it is. I think I'm just like more aware of my height than I've ever been for some mm. reason. And like this jacket, I have no idea. You sound why. like a man. <laughs> you got to get some uh, some big old boots then. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Six inches. But then it looks like I'm like overcompensating. You know, again, you sound your, like a man. In your pink suede jacket pink, and your yeah, giant very, six inch heels. Exactly, exactly. I guess I'm six inches like, is not giant, but I swear, six baby. inches really tall. Is it six? My inch wife heels? is mad short, and I feel like six for her is like pff, light. That's work. so. That's like ankle breaking height. You know? I swear, babe, they're six inches. <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> just yeah, man. six inches is huge, dude. Yeah, man, that's shit. a huge. That's yeah. a huge heel. That's actually, almost, too, that's almost too big. That's yeah, too I think big. I think the big heels hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the small heels. I like the kitten heels. Uh, Laura, thank you for coming on to the only podcast that matters. Before what a treat. We, before we get you out of here in into your lovely and the sun's out for you on your um, Greenpoint adventure, you we would it. love oh, to yeah, know have a job. as a successful media entrepreneur yourself. Do you have any constructive criticism that you would like to share with us? Oh. Yeah. No, you guys have been so accommodating. Oh. Were you Wait. scared coming on? I was, you know what? I was actually really nervous because I'm like, I don't know. Like, do I, I was, I made sure to have like the right amount of coffee today and not mm. have too much. Cause mm. I was like, what if I like, 
for her freak out. I don't yeah. know. I think it's just like the performance anxiety of like talking. Yeah. But, this um, was definitely uh, much better than our last interaction, which was, uh, I guess we'll tell this. Uh, can, I, can we tell the story? Yeah, tell the story. Okay. Yeah. I was like, wait, I was like, wait, is it good? For those that have, how long have they stuck around? Like, I don't know. We two are, hours, at like, what are we the at? hour 51 minute mark. If you stuck around this long, um, oh. the last interaction was I went up to you because I like started reading the newsletter and I was like, and you came to, we saw that you were on the invite list to our Fashion Week event last September, 2023. Right. Parcel. Yeah. At Parcel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with Basic, with basic Space. Space. Yes. And I was like, oh my God, Laura, thank you so much for coming. Like, so great to meet you. And you're like, uh, dude, we we like dated. And I was like, <laughs> what? And was mortified. Oh my God. And I'm so sorry. I don't want to apologize in person. Um, <laughs> no, that's really the funny. the best part is I went, I searched my email. I searched your name in my email to try and find your email to invite you on the show. And the... <laughs> Wait, have we? Do we have email history together? Yes. Wait for only it. Only because. Oh no! I'm and terrified. it all came back to me. the The odds were a blur most for the most part. <laughs> you know, Obama. But uh, it all came back to me. Uh, in 2015, you emailed me um, two tickets to uh, see Action Bronson at Terminal Five. What? And I was like, "Holy shit! I remember this now." <laughs> Wait, where did I get two tickets to see Action Bronson? From like Ticketmaster, and then you just like no. forwarded me the email. Yeah. 2015. We well, saw. You're looking at me. I'm not involved here. Oh my dude. god. I like. I kind of like vaguely remember Terminal Five. Like I forgot that was a place. Yeah. But I'm like, there's. Yeah. I'm like, who, who? I don't even think I knew who Action Bronson was at the time. Well, well you clearly called this you were cool fucking. Guy, did you're on uh, real hip hop head. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I got the tickets or something. Yeah, I think you got the tickets and then you sent Crazy. them to me. Did yeah. you guys go? Yes. Okay, because I was like, I was trying to, because I remember when 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 we ran into each other at your event at Basic Space, you were like, hey, like I'm James, and I was like, I'm Laura. Or, or something, and then I was like, we dated, and you, and so you, you kind of and weren't even like the floor. You kind of weren't even. I didn't even know that you knew who I was in relation to the newsletter then, and I was like, I only knew you as that. Right, <laughs> it was and, actually the reverse. Your, yeah. your reputation preceded you in your professional sense. Oh my god, that's so funny. But yeah, so but then you had mentioned something like in that same conversation indicating that you didn't know who I was. And I was like, did he just totally fake the, like, I forgot we dated thing. And oh. then dropped like a, like I know see. who you are Yo, in relation to that. And so S-tier I was like, your gaslighting. Going oh on my there. God. <laughs> <laughs> but since then I was trying to remember, cause I know we went on like, I don't know, like two dates or three dates or something like that. Two or three, and one but of I, them was to an action Bronson concert. And I, there's, that's there's amazing. an IG yeah. photo. I remember he like bench pressed a woman or like shoulder what? pressed a woman on stage. And I have that on my Instagram. That's amazing. Oh my God. Yeah. I was trying to remember like what we did, like what, what were our dates even? I couldn't remember them because this was years ago. This is like, you know, a decade ago. I can tell you what he didn't wear. That's a leather jacket, a white tee and blue jeans. (laughs) Couldn't afford leather back then. (laughs) (laughs) All right. um, Well, thank you. Well, we'll get a plug, 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 plug. Where can the kids follow you? What do you want to plug? Oh my God. So magazine.ltd is where you, is the. That's the um, IG. That is the L, that is the IG, but that's also the website. But it's like M A G A S I N dot L T D. Also, if you just go to my Instagram, I feel like that. Just look up Laura Riley R E I L L Y. That's mm-hmm. like it's everything is linked in bio. Like as we have to do these days. Subscri- so follow on IG both the uh, human and the newsletter. <laughs> Subscribe to the newsletter, right? Yeah, Whether you find go to the site or just Substack, right? Yeah, yeah. It's also on Substack. Um, magazine. Stay tuned for magazine's menswear coverage dropping imminently. Yes. And click all those links. Make yeah. sure you open the email when it hits open your inbox. Open the email, click the link, uh, spike that click through rate. Yeah, cop some shit for you, for you, for yourself, for your girl. Yeah, anyone. I'll be. I'll think on some gifts also. Sure. Honestly, a gift ish, a gift send. Yeah. A send that is <laughs> boys gifts for your girl yeah. totally. from. No, it's you? a great one. Yeah, that is a good we one. Did, we did something like cold. that on Valentine's Day, and it definitely, I think, helped out a lot of uh, struggling young men out there. Uh, I think it's very valid. I mm-hmm. think there's a lot of opacity in that yeah, space. Men's mental health, really, people don't talk I about know. it a lot, but a lot of it is from anxiety that comes with trying to buy your partner yeah. a gift. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard shop, to be a man in 2024. Shop dating is hard. Um, yeah. But that's what we're here for. Uh, just to make men's lives easier. Mm-hmm. Yep, hundred <laughs> percent. It's a service. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Laura, thank you for coming on to the yeah. only podcast. Appreciate that your time. Thank you so much for having me. Thank this was you. a lot of fun. Jeff, take us out. <laughs>